what was it we were saying a couple of weeks ago? Nothing much going on, no driver changes at all, first time in history, boring, boring, boring. Yeah, right. Well, I don't know where to start. Andretti, maybe. maybe. Everyone's probably forgotten about Andretti's entry to the Formula One World Championship, being rejected by the powers that be. No, but it's, of course, it's Lewis going to, to Ferrari. An amazing thing, really. Uh, caught everybody by surprise. Toto Wolff particularly admitting today that it was a big surprise for everybody at Mercedes. And lining up alongside Charles Leclerc at Ferrari. Dream team, possibly. Well, we'll talk about that during the live stream today. Welcome to the live stream, wherever you are in the world, whatever time zone you're in, welcome aboard. Ask your questions as we're going along. We've got a stack of questions already. So I'm going to go straight into it because um, I think everyone will be asking questions about all the things that we want to talk about. So let's just go for it. First is from Gameborg. Haha, ha, yeah, I think he's actually replying here to somebody saying there should be some sort of emergency live stream yesterday when the news broke. I second what the others are saying. We needed an emergency live chat. Well, here we are on a Friday, so there we go. Although tomorrow is reasonable, that's today. I'm not sure if I have a question, but I would just say that I hope to see Albon at Merck. Well, that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, I mean, Mercedes engines at Williams, he has been going well. But as I understand it, he's been offered a three-year contract by Red Bull to start in 2025. So I think you're going to see him alongside Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. Um, I can't imagine he's going to say no to that. Equally, that's as I understand it. It's not 100%. It's probably 90% correct, I think. So I think he, you're going to see him in a very good car, and he's probably going to win some Grand Prix now. But he, uh, Alex Albon, he's really worked hard to get back into Red Bull. And uh, congratulations to him on that, on being offered that contract. That's a really cool thing. Um, so yeah, that was good. Uh, thank you very much for that. Next one is Herbert Williams. Just wondering about Botas. Poor Valtteri Botas. Um, Osman said to me after the Lewis thing broke, uh, possibly if Mercedes had never replaced Valtteri with George Russell, Lewis might still be at Mercedes. And was that a trigger, perhaps? I, you know, there's been a whole lot of things since Abu Dhabi 21 and they're all they all as I, as I said from that moment I mean I'm surprised that he's still racing even Lewis that is given the things that have gone wrong for him racing wise in his life since then Valtteri obviously was a decision made before that race had uh, even finished but then beyond that of course um, what happened in Abu Dhabi and then what's happened with the car ever since and and obviously some friction with George as well from time to time, because George is quick. A lot of people are saying, oh, yeah, but he wasn't very quick in 2023. You know, Lewis had the... Don't be too sure about that. George Russell is very quick. And he's had a few issues. If all racing drivers do. I mean, Charles Leclerc hasn't always looked brilliant in the Ferrari, has he? But George Russell's really good. Anyway, getting back to the point, Botas, yeah, well, he's currently at Sauber, of course. And the question is... Audi in 2026 and whether he will be a part of that package he would like to think so I'm sure and he's a he's a studious guy and he gets on with it he's the sort of bloke that Audi would like whether he's at the back end of his career a little bit too much for that time I don't know I mean you've got to be thinking Carlos Sainz probably in that car maybe Valtteri in the other car maybe somebody like Theo Pocher who's their contracted young driver Maybe somebody else, maybe Sergio Perez, you know. Um, but I have heard also that Audi currently own 35% of Sauber. And I think that the next tranche of payment of per share purchase agreed was 25% to take them over the 50 cent mark. And I'm sh I think I understand that's a bit delayed. And, and there may be some people thinking, I wonder if this deal's going to be exactly what it was going to be. And of course, one of the problems when you've got large car companies buying into Formula One in this way, long term, is our personnel changes within the, the car companies. I mean, these CEOs and COOs all seem to stay in their jobs for about three years and then they disappear. And if you've got somebody who likes Formula One and he commits, that's fine. But then three years later, he might be replaced by somebody who's a bit of a bean counter and may think, mm, do we really need Formula One? Anyway, I'm only saying that. I'm not saying that in relation to Audi. I'm just saying... I understand, again, a little bit like the Alex Albon thing, that they are a bit late on that second payment. So, well, the second purchase of share, share package. So we'll see what happens there, obviously. Um, let's hope it all goes through. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, and I'm sure somebody's going to ask about the Michael thing. I'm absolutely, 
it's disgusted the word, I'm appalled I think is the word, um, at the way Formula One has rejected the Michael Andretti. And I, let's say the Andretti thing because you know Mario for sure was 100% behind all that and wanted to be um, wanted to be involved, have his name obviously on, on that team. And I think the, A, the, the fact that they've rejected is ridiculous. And beyond that, I think the reasons they've given are insulting. And, and that one about, uh, we think that Andretti would have benefited more from the Formula One Association than vice versa. I mean, that is absolutely crass. And, and, and it was, uh, it, the, the, the pre prelude to that was saying, oh, well, you know, the survey we did, what survey, who, what, people did they ask? And if they asked people who said, oh no, Andretti is not important in the world of motorsport, he wouldn't add anything to Formula One. I mean, you're asking the wrong people or you're asking the wrong questions. That's all I can say because Mario Andretti with Michael, and you've got to say Michael's achieved a massive amount as a team owner. Mario is the case study of a racing driver uh, the greatest racing driver of all time in many ways. I mean, the versatility of this guy and his commitment to Formula One when he was in Formula One and what he did for Formula One as an American, I think it is just unconscionable that that, that it's been rejected. I have, I have sort of set it up and, uh, and hopefully prepared everybody for the shock of Andretti not being accepted by saying time and again the real problem is going to be the current team owners who don't want to have a smaller size of the financial cake but i've said you know the way to to solve that is to give everybody a bit of a bonus and to, to sell them on how good the andretti name would be for formula one and get on with it and there's there's too much of the of the tail wagging the dog there i think and there's yeah what formula one team owners want is for somebody if if they're not racing themselves they want someone to come in and buy their all important franchise and and you could what is happening now what has happened now with the andretti thing actually is beginning to say to the world there's something wrong with the franchise system in formula one and it's no good saying oh well formula one could be the most valuable sports package on the planet and this and that it's not all about money it is if you're the commercial rights holder i totally get that but it's not all about money in terms of the sport as a whole and the people that work in the sport. The 120 people, I think, were already employed by Andretti. Nick Chester, very good engineer, already working for Andretti on that Formula One program. I think it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And I'm very, uh, yeah, I, I, I felt like picking up the phone a couple of times to talk to Mario, but I don't know what to say to him because he probably wouldn't even take the call. He'd say, oh, Windsor, yeah, he's one of those Formula One guys. We won't talk to them anymore. Uh, and I just feel embarrassed, to be honest. And I've known Mario since what? I don't know, 1972. A very, very good friend. I just, I just can't believe that this has happened. Anyway, we'll probably have more questions about this, as I say, because um, uh, I think it's uh, just one of the worst things Formula One has done in a long time. And I, I don't think... I know Stefano Domenicali reasonably well. I got a lot of respect for him. And I can't imagine Stefano's comfortable with this either because he's a racer too. And if commercial interests have come this far that they are rejecting something like this, then there's something wrong somewhere, in my opinion. And there's lots of stuff about, oh, well, you know, 2028. I mean, what Formula One person thinks beyond three months anyway? They don't. I mean, 28, give me a break. Who can think that far ahead? Ridiculous. Um, we just had a, uh, a nice super chat in from, um, <laughs> I think this is Osman again. Yeah, let's have a look. Uh, it is Roman's Ferrari dream. Yeah, we've heard that before, Osman. Very good. Hi, Peter. Fred Vassar hinted at a major signing towards the end of last year. Anyone besides Lewis? Do you see any parallels between Michael leaving in 06 and Lewis now? I think you'll find that, um, Osman, thank you very much, or Roman, um, is Loic Serra who was a performance engineer at Mercedes, who uh, joined Ferrari over the winter and December, I think. And Freddie Vassar worked pretty hard to get him. Uh, and now we're talking down that path. Let's just say, you know, we, we've said from day one, the minute Freddie Vassar went to Ferrari, that for sure there would have been a lot of conversations with his old mate Lewis, who of course drove for him in Euro F3 and then GP3 and GP2. So, and one, apart from the first year in Euro F3, when I think James Rossiter was actually quite good. It was called ASN then, I think. ART has been a great team. Um, and, and for sure, Lewis is very close to Freddie, as close to Freddie as he is to Toto Wolff. And I'm, you know, <laughs> when was it, 
what was, uh, oh, hello, Lewis. Yeah, can you tell me who is your good performance engineer? Oh, well, you know, Loke Sarah, why don't you get him? Oh, yeah, if you get him, I might come and join Ferrari. You know, I'm only making that up. Wouldn't have happened. Uh, no way in the world. But I'm sure that that, um, you know, possibly Lewis might have thought, oh, Loke's going. Um, I need a breath of fresh air. I've got to get out of this whole thing. I still feel as if I'm driving for the team that didn't win in Abu Dhabi 21. Uh, I got George in the other car, which I didn't want. I asked him to keep Valtteri, a few other things as well. I'm, I'm at the back end of my career. I want at least two good years, guaranteed. I've always wanted to drive for Ferrari. I love Ferrari road cars anyway. It's a great brand and they're going to pay me a lot of money. So why not give it a go? It's, going, it's, a, it's a way to revitalize these last few years of my career. So I totally get it from Lewis's point of view. And I think it's a brilliant thing. So I am excited for him. But I think um, parallels between Michael leaving in 06 and Lewis now, I think the parallel potentially is Michael going to do those last couple of years with Mercedes and Lewis now doing the last, maybe the last couple of years, if not two or three with Ferrari. I think that is the parallel. And we'll see how well Lewis drives at that point. He's probably, you know, thinking 2025, he'll be well fired up. Depends what sort of year he has in 24, of course. I mean, and that's another point, isn't it? Imagine, I'm not saying it would happen, or will happen, or is even likely to happen. But imagine if the Mercedes this year is an unbelievably good car, quicker than a Red Bull, and Lewis wins, I don't know, 14 Grand Prix, and is world champion, and wins his eighth championship. It's going to be a weird thing, isn't it? That he's then saying, oh, imagine what Mercedes would feel. They've just got this guy winning his eighth world championship. And then he goes and celebrates it in the year, first year at Ferrari. It's a, that is weird. You know, for a, for a driver to announce at the beginning of a season that he's leaving at the end of the season is quite unusual. Usually they, they leave it till about September and there are lots of rumors and all that stuff. But actually to announce it at the start of the year, to my mind, it suggests that Lewis is thinking in terms of making life as easy as possible for Mercedes, giving them options for other drivers and 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 I suppose Carlos Sainz and all the rest of it finding another drive. I suppose it's that. Um, I, mean, I would have said before he joined Ferrari that it was also giving him the option of maybe stopping at the end of 24. Because I've always said, you know, if it was me, I don't, I don't know how I would have had the motivation to keep racing in Formula One as well as Lewis has all these years since, since Abu Dhabi. But... Um, I don't know, you know, Michael left in 06 and Lewis now, I think, um, no, they're not really any parallels. The only parallel is, is, is how Michael drove in those last couple of years at Mercedes and whether Lewis, and, and, and Lewis relative to how well he's driven throughout his career, whether it'll be about the same or whether he'll be just as good, if not better, totally fired up and, you know, all the rest of it. It's not going to be easy with Charles Leclerc in the other car. And of course, that is another story. It's another story because literally a week ago, Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris, if you please, who didn't need to rush into signing anything, in my opinion. But Charles Leclerc, apparently kind of knowing there was something going on with Lewis, nonetheless renewed with Ferrari, long-term deal, I suppose on the basis there wasn't really anywhere else he was going to go. I mean, he wasn't going to go and get an offer from Mercedes because they thought they were keeping Lewis and and uh, and obviously Red Bull's Max. So why not stay at Ferrari, as I've said all along in many live streams? And they offered him a long-term deal, which had a, a, a double impact, really. One was, OK, I'm with Ferrari, I'm going to commit to it. And they are committing to me with a massive increase in, in money. But in not offering the same deal to Carlos Sainz, obviously now we know why because it's Lewis Hamilton but at the time from Charles point of view it was so Ferrari are now going to get behind me I'm the guy they realize that if they're going to win a championship they've got to focus on one driver so that lasted about a week <laughs> and then Lewis Hamilton arrived um, the, the guy that I'm interested in actually is Nicholas Todd because he was very much a part of ART when Lewis was there and winning races and part of that whole Freddie Vasseur Lewis Hamilton thing it was Nicholas Todd as well and Nicholas Todd of course manages Charles Leclerc now you would I imagine Nicholas and Freddie Vasseur are still pretty close and talk quite a lot and you would imagine that in normal circumstances Nicholas Todd would be delighted that Lewis is coming to Ferrari because he's a, a Freddie Vasseur guy and he's a Ferrari guy with his dad and everything else but if you're representing Charles Leclerc would you really want to have Lewis Hamilton in the other car I suppose, I mean, that's an, that's an interesting question, isn't it? Because obviously, Nicholas would have known about it. 
and he would have told Charles. And Charles has presumably said, nah, no problem. I, you know, I can blow science away. I'll blow Lewis away. That's probably what he's thinking. Although Lewis is a dope, different animal, um, he's definitely beatable because I'm Charles Leclerc. That's how all racing drivers have to think. I'm not putting words into Charles' brain that come, make him come over as any, anybody arrogant. Or well, sorry, I'm not personifying Charles as anybody arrogant. He's not. He, he, if, you, if you don't think that you are the quickest guy in the world, you shouldn't be in Formula One. Anybody. Alex Albon, Yuki Tsunoda, anybody. Or potentially the quickest. And that's for sure what Charles thinks. But I think the one thing that's going to be an irritation will be the money, will it not? Because Lewis, I think, was on 60-ish at Mercedes. He's for sure on north of that at Ferrari now. So let's be kind, let's be conservative and say he's on 70. And I suspect the one thing Nicholas Todd has made sure of is that Charles is on exactly the same money as Lewis. So if Charles on 70, let's say, and that's conservative, that's 140. And what's the budget cap this year for Formula One race teams? 135 million, I think, when I last looked. So here's, this is what, this is, this is the lunacy of the budget cap in Formula One. Of course, driver retainers are not included in the budget cap, but the two drivers at Ferrari are being paid more than the total budget cap for the operation of the entire Ferrari Formula One team, including the building of the car. <laughs> so what does that tell you? You know, it's just complete nonsense. If you add all the motorhomes and everything else, all that stuff you have in the paddock, I mean, the budget cap, what is it all about? Um, as I've said a million times, I, I think I should get rid of it because this just, if anything makes nonsense of it, is this. I know Ferrari themselves aren't actually paying that. It's probably all coming from Philip Morris still, that money. But And then on top of all that, of course, I would suspect Lewis is going to earn, he's probably done a very good deal with Ferrari, and he's probably going to earn a lot more on top of that let's say 70, with personal endorsements and all the other stuff, not necessarily visible on his helmet and overalls, but I imagine Ferrari have been pretty uh, open with Lewis or free with Lewis about what he can do away from the racetrack and the money he can earn. So I don't know how much that's going to be. That's probably another 70, I would think, if not more. So, you know, big payday for Lewis Hamilton. Not that he needed it because he's, you know, but numbers, aren't they? They're all numbers. And if you're a racer, you want to have more more money than the next guy and then, so I think that will eat a little bit away at Charles possibly but at the same time um, Charles from Charles point of view you know if he nails it and he wins and he and he over a season he beats Lewis that's pretty good isn't it and he he's good enough also to think that he can learn from Lewis as well he's one of these drivers who is quite self-critical and who's intelligent enough not to let his ego get on top of him and I think he will learn a little bit from Lewis in the same way that Lewis might sort of be boosted by Charles' personality and how sharp and quick he is. I think that probably helped Lewis as well. Totally vibrant thing. I'm going way off track here in terms of um, <laughs> in terms of answering that question. But anyway, um, thank you very much for that. I hope that um, kind of got somewhere near where we were. Um, OK, next one. <clears throat> this is... Uh, BC Garage. Hi, Pete. A couple of streams ago, you wonder what BC meant in relation to New Zealand. I still do, I think, don't I? Uh, what is it, BC? Uh, it just, it doesn't. Oh, BC. Okay, that's your name. Okay. Um, it doesn't. I just couldn't think of anything else. Ha ha. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. All right. Uh, good one. Thank you. Question. You exit. You excited for Hamilton? I am. Yeah, of course I'm excited for Lewis because I think he's... Uh, I think he's a fabulous racing driver. I'm totally blown away by how well he's driven since everything had happened at Abu Dhabi and how bad the Mercedes has been with George in the other car. And I think he's mixed it in the midfield. Of course, there have been moments when he was slower than George. Of course, there have been moments when things didn't go right. But he's, he's, he's been pushing. He's been absolutely mixing it with the Yuki Sonodas and the Kevin Magnussons if he needs to after a pit stop and all that stuff. And um, if he can now sort of breathe and see a different ending to his career on the horizon and it's a Ferrari and he's going to be in red overalls and that road car he's got, or I would imagine he's got one, uh, is suddenly something he can really enjoy, then um, I think it's great. And, and I think, you know, he's a kid. As I've always said, you know, Lewis Hamilton is ultimately at heart. He's, he's a kid racing around Rye House in the wet in a go-kart on a Sunday afternoon. 
or Macau in a Euro F3 car. And that's, that's Lewis Hamilton. And, and I think what we're seeing here is that exactly that. It's not, I want the glory of the Ferrari name. I'm going to be the biggest brand in the world. Of course, all that stuff's out there. But this is it. This is Lewis just wanting to drive a Ferrari, as a lot of people have. Sebastian Vettel, Jody Schechter, Michael Schumacher, whoever it is, you know, you name it, Nicky Lauda, Carlos Reutemann. So, Gilles Villeneuve. So, um, I think it's a great thing for Lewis. I think he's done exactly the right thing. Uh, you could argue that, you know, it's a shame he didn't do it sooner, to be honest, because he's just wasted two years at Mercedes, really. And I think it goes back to, I've often said this, I don't think Mercedes fought hard enough after Abu Dhabi to get that overturned. I think they gave up much too quickly. And I think it's because they're a blue chip Fortune 500 board that they just wanted to say, oh, well, you know, let's get on. We better not have too much acrimony. We'll keep calm the waters. But they should have fought harder. And I, you know, from that moment, it really stuck in my gullet that, uh, that he just had to walk, Lewis had to walk away. I mean, I still, I'm also blown away by how charming he was on the podium, really, how composed he was at Abu Dhabi. You know, he wasn't, there were no histrionics. He just accepted it, or seemed to, seemingly. And, and there was Max as the new world champion. Not detracting from Max in any way. And speaking of Max, I see he was out in a Ferrari the other day as well. Actually, he was in a 296 GT3 Ferrari at Mugello and Portomayo with a friend of his, Terry Vermeulen, um, just helping him sort the car, the GT3 car. Nice, you know, Max get a few laps in, do this, do that. I'm sure a few burnouts, a few wheelies, whatever. Um, so Max in a Ferrari as well. How's that for big news? Yeah, very big news. Um, good, thank you for that one. Uh, back to Gameborg. And poor, yeah, you're up here. And poor Charles, Lady Luck is not his side. I expect him to become awkward and cringe at times. I expect it to become awkward and to cringe at times. Yeah, I mean, it's Michael Schumacher. I mean, Nigel Mansell always wanted Ricardo Patrese. He was the perfect guy in the other car. Max Verstappen wants Sergio Perez. Perfect guy in the other car. Okay, a few dramas and the whole, you know, I can win the championship, which lasts about two weeks. And that's about it. But you know what I mean. It's just a guy that you know you can easily beat. And he's there. He does the job. He wins a race or two when the car's good for him and you have a problem or two and that's the perfect number two if you want to win a world championship whether it's close or whether you got the best car it doesn't really matter that is the way to go you absolutely focus on that number one driver and you ensure that the other guy doesn't take points from you and yet and yet it's mainly driven by the fans but there are quite a lot of people out there that think that still you've got to have the two best drivers you can possibly have to take points from one another and fight and spur one another on it's complete nonsense in my view and it only ends in tears usually. But that's what Ferrari, for, for a week, they had Charles Leclerc. <laughs> and then they've got, now they've got Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton. I think Lewis will be a lot more, um, what's the word? I think, I think if Charles is ahead of Lewis and he's could have kind of got the edge, I don't think Lewis is going to react badly to that. I think Lewis is going to be very calm and just get on with it and he'll wait and gather knowledge of the team and working with the engineers and he'll slowly slowly get there um the problem will be if if Charles for whatever reason a bit like 91 when Nigel was the quicker driver but he had like nine software failures on the electronics in a row and Ricardo had none and suddenly Ricardo had you know 18 points more than Nigel after four races or something and everyone was saying oh Ricardo Patrese is blowing away Nigel Mansell and yeah of course but that could happen of course you know it could be that Charles has four early season retirements and Lewis has two podiums and a win and all of a sudden what's going to happen with Charles Leclerc then that is the real issue I think it's you know I don't think it's a problem if Charles is slightly ahead and doing the job as he would but if he has an issue, a couple of issues, and he's behind Lewis, that's when Ferrari could just explode, I think, and <laughs> stand back. Uh, that would not be fun to watch. And it won't be fun. Will it be fun for Lewis if he's getting beaten by Charles? I don't think so. I'm not saying he will, but I'm just saying if he gets beaten by Charles on a regular basis, will, will driving for Ferrari be fun for Lewis? Will it be fun because he's driving for Ferrari? Two, because he's Lewis Hamilton. Nobody can take anything away from him. Three, because he's earning a massive amount of money. And four, he can only look good if he starts beating Charles. So that's the next race for him always, isn't it? Because if he starts beating Charles Leclerc at Ferrari, then Lewis is suddenly the greatest racing driver of all time, probably. So, 
yeah, I think that's that's why from Lewis's point of view, it's not a lot of downside, is there? The only downside really is if, as I say, Mercedes have an unbelievable car this year, which isn't brilliant, but with a bit of massaging could well win the 2025 World Championship. And Lewis wins the last race of 24 and he has to walk out of that car and go to Ferrari. And if Ferrari have just had a terrible year, how's Lewis going to feel at that point? You know, that could happen as well, couldn't it? And speaking of that, you know, they've lost quite a lot of good people now at Mercedes. And Toto Wolff is doing a sort of press conference thing today saying, you know, we can't be confident we're going to beat Red Bull. Of course they can't be confident. And obviously they just hope that they got a car that's got a bigger sweet spot and better to manage and to run and to set up than the one they've had the last two years. But there's certainly, you know, no reason to think that Mercedes are going to be blowing Red Bull away. I think Ferrari, Ferrari were testing in uh, Barcelona this week for Pirelli, testing the new Pirellis. And they also did a young driver test with um, Oliver Berman and um, Arthur Leclerc, Arthur Leclerc and um, Charles' brother. And it was interesting, actually, because they had the 22 and the 23 car there. And it was interesting that the 23 car was about a second a lap quicker than the 22, tire for tire, which it's probably quite good news, isn't it? Shows they're getting in the right direction, if nothing else. I mean, uh, you could have thought, oh, no, the 20. I think the 22 car probably was a bit easier to drive, but a bit sort of bigger sweet spot. The 23 car was a bit knife edgy, but in comparison, direct comparison. But it was, um, uh, this is only just watching out on the circuit and, um, you know, through the fence. And that's what it looked like. And they, But there's definitely a quicker car, definitely in terms of downforce. And, and that was good. But I've got to tell you, Oliver Berman, in the Ferrari, really, really good. That that was um, the 22 car. And actually, Charles was in the 22 car on a different day, so he couldn't really compare it. But as far as I can make out, that he was like four tenths, I think. But it was a slower day when Oliver, four tenths quicker, but Oliver was out, Ollie was out. And this guy's really good, really good. And I suppose there was a sort of moment last week when Oliver Berman thought, yes, I could be in a Ferrari in 25. Well, that's gone, I'm afraid. Uh, of course, he's very well thought of at Ferrari, and I'm sure he will eventually end up in a Ferrari Grand Prix car. He's really good. Uh, first season of Formula 2 last year, was winning races, looked like he'd been around, you know, really quick. Speaking of quick drivers, um, the there was also an interesting test at Silverstone this week. I mentioned it in the live stream last week. Um, Double R doing some good testing with their uh, Euro F3 cars and um, Kimi Antonelli, this guy is good. <laughs> He's really good. Now he is a Mercedes contracted driver. So I think there's half a chance that Mercedes will run him alongside George Russell in 25. Of course, there are other guys out there. And I think Fred Vesti is very talented as well. Very talented. More talented, I think, than 99% of the world giving credit for. If you watch the way he drives, talk about short corner guy who's really good. Um, but there seems to be this momentum behind Antonelli. But we'll see what happens there. Maybe it's a bit too early for him. But what I would say is that um, poor Rene at... at uh, at Prima this year in Formula 2, he's got Antonelli and Berman together. Imagine those two guys. Talk about Hamilton and Leclerc. What about Berman and Antonelli? Poof. Good luck with that. Um, John Fallows. Uh, hi from Manchester, UK. Hi there. I have doubts that Lewis will find things comfortable in an Italian team with an ethos different from his current team. As a driver pairing, the contrast will be interesting. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I was, I was imagining it. Or was I dreaming it last night? I don't know. Everybody's brain is full of... I'm looking up. It's funny what those lights on. I haven't... Um, full of Lewis Hamilton and Ferrari. It's such a big thing, isn't it? Lewis and the red overalls and Lewis. I, I was thinking, you know, what's he going to do? Is he going to have a little flat in Modena, Marinello, like... Phil Hill used to and plays music and we hear it coming out the window at two o'clock in the afternoon. They're all having a siesta before they go testing or whatever they're going to do and um, or sim sim testing these days. Yeah, it's going to be fun, isn't it? Where's is he, where he going to live? What's he going? He's going to presumably stay where he is and he's just going to be going up there periodically and. And because you, you imagine that Mercedes have sort of created this Lewis Hamilton world in terms of where how his motorhome is 
you know, sorry, not his motorhome, but how the Mercedes motorhome is designed around Lewis and what he wants and, you know, in terms of where he gets changed, where he doesn't, you know, where he gets changed back again and the meeting rooms and all that stuff. You'd imagine it's very Lewis orientated. Well, I always have. And I wonder whether Ferrari are going to go the same way or whether he just... And uh, you know, to be honest with you, I, you know, Lewis, he's bright enough and he's emotionally intelligent enough to want to have all these Ferrari things and just fit in with them and see how they feel because he'll want to have this change of of uh, of gear in his life. And if they say, no, no, that's not how we do it, Lewis, this is what we do here. You sit there and blah, blah, blah. He'll probably think, oh, wow, OK, see how this goes, because uh, he'll be he'll be appreciating everything there. And obviously, the only thing that really matters is how good the car is. And, and that's where he probably thinks, you know, he can probably bring a lot to the team, I imagine, working with people like Loke and all that. And Charles may even be thinking that as well. So um, it will be it will be different and seeing them together. You know, I don't think Charles and Carlos have been I think Charles always been a bit sort of uncomfortable with the politics at Ferrari. It's been quite heavily weighted towards Carlos, certainly not, maybe not last year, but in previous years. And he's had to sort of fight that. And for sure, he's thinking, oh, well, more again with Lewis. But I'll just let him get on with it. I learned how to do that with Carlos. I'll let the Lewis Hamilton show happen and I'll just get on and do my thing. And it'll be quite good because there'll be so much stuff going around him. I can just focus on what I want to do. My two or three guys, Jock Clear, and the rest of them will get on with it. And I, I suspect that's how it'll be. And I think Ferrari will be, um, I think they will have closed the gap to Red Bull this year. I'd be surprised if they're not sort of, if the gap's that long, I think they'll sort of reduce it by half for this season. I'm not saying they'll be right there, but I think they'll be in a position to put a bit of pressure on Red Bull, by which I mean uh, not pressure in terms of, you know, forcing them to go, well, you know, pressure in terms of traffic. What I mean is that right now, basically over a season, Red Bull can pick and choose when they want to come in for tyres and they can sort of do their own strategy in their own world. But I think, I, I've just got a feeling that in 24, Ferrari will be in a position where they might be able to sort of push Red Bull in having to make a pit stop to prevent an undercut or to do an overcut, whatever they're going to do. And, and they're going to be, uh, the Ferrari are going to be a little bit nearer. And I think, I hope that's the case. You know, I, don't, I think if, if that is the case, I think we can all say, well, racing is a bit better and it is a bit closer. If they're forcing Red Bull to have to start to make decisions that aren't, um, you know, the perfect decision from their point of view, but it's a forced decision, then then that's good. Uh, and, and of course, when that happens, if you've spent, if you had three years of basic domination and you can basically run the race as you want to do it, and then all of a sudden you're having to sort of think about other teams and other cars and other drivers and respond to them, that might induce a few errors when it comes to strategic calls because they haven't been doing it very much, if you see what I mean. And and Red Bull are not infallible. You know, I keep reminding people of that occasion when... Esteban Ocon won in Hungary and it was, it was the, you know, there was that shunt and they stopped and, and, and they basically rebuilt the floor of Max Verstappen's car and the ra- it had been wet and, and the race was restarted with Max down in, I don't know, 16th place or something and the rain was starting to ease. It was by no means guaranteed that it was going to stop, but it was starting to ease and it did stop and the track did dry. And you would have thought that somebody at Red Bull would have said, well, we're starting 16th. We haven't got much to lose here. Put the slicks on the car because if it does, I mean, for sure, Max can keep the thing on the island for the first five laps. And if it does start to dry out, he could get a result. And nobody did that at Red Bull. So they're not perfect. And, and the reality is, had they started him on slicks, he probably would have been on the podium. So that was, you know, if, if Ferrari had done that, everyone would be shouting and screaming. But it was Red Bull, so nobody talked about it. And that was, I thought that was interesting. Thanks for that question. Um, Stale Hansen says, I don't think Lewis has any faith in the new Merck, so he left. Well, it could be that. Yeah, it's probably a faith thing because at the moment, I can't imagine anybody even at Merck knows exactly how well this car is going to go. I'm sure they're all full of enthusiasm and optimism. Uh, but there's a, you know, it's a three day test and then bang into the Grand Prix season. And it's you know if, if it's a quick car out of the box, it's that'll be amazing, isn't it? And uh, 
I, I'm, I'm sure Lewis won't have said already, oh, no, the car's a dog. I've got to leave. I think it's I've just had enough of all this. I need this stage of my life, this stage of my career. I've got Ferrari offering me what, let's say, conservatively 70 million a year, two year deal. I'm going to do it. At least I'm going to have fun driving for Ferrari. It's going to be different. Nice road cars, nothing else. So I think it's that. And, you know, because I say it is a risk because the Mercedes could be a really good car. The Ferrari could be terrible this year. And Lewis might be leaving a team at the end of 2024 thinking, oh, I wish I was staying here. So, now, and this is this is from Rob B. Touching on the point I made, it's very unusual for a driver to announce at the start of a season that he's going to leave. Why would Merck want to keep Lewis for 24? Not going to support him or let him take any info. Wasted season. Well, yeah, it's a good point. And, and I, you know, I've kind of made that. It's very unusual. And if nothing else, if George Russell's um, stock had fallen a bit in 2023, this is good news for George Russell, isn't it? Because guess where all the focus is going to be at Mercedes? And he's in a position to get a wage rise because if they lose George as well, and there'll be teams that could take George, uh, then they're really struggling. So they, they've got to keep George, I would imagine that's what they're thinking uh, with all his history and his knowledge and everything else. And, and he's quick. But George is in a position now because of Lewis to get more money. And, uh, and that'll be good for George Russell. And so probably you'll see a revitalized George Russell. A lot of people say, oh, that's because they're favoring him now. I don't think they'll favor him. I think they'll still want to give Lewis the best race car they can. So they'll just do whatever they do with George. And there'll be the confidentiality stuff with George. And they'll just replicate that on Lewis's car and see how they go. And Lewis will do his own setup stuff still with these guys. They still want to win races and they still got to work with Lewis Hamilton. But it is an odd situation. It's very odd when the guy's leaving. At what point do you start excluding him from discussions about where they might be going with the car? Yeah, it's a difficult one. And I can't, I, you know, in a way, I don't have much sympathy for Mercedes because I don't think they handled Abu Dhabi very well. And I obviously, you can give them one year off in terms of not getting the car right in 22. But to have two years of a car that isn't a race winning car is really inexcusable for a team with that amount of money and that amount of, I say that amount of money collectively, we're talking powertrain as well, driver say, salaries, retainers and everything else, motorhomes. And, and on top of that, um, you know, the car's been pretty mediocre. And they, you know, it's not as if they haven't had any sort of data from which they could learn either. So it's very odd that they've been so poor in the last two years. And, and it's no surprise that Lewis has, has done this. And I wonder from Lewis's point of view what it'll be like driving for the team. I suppose from a, in, in a way he'll probably drive really well this year because he won't have to think, he won't be asked to go to the sim very much. He won't be involved too much with what's going on with the technical discussions. He can just be a racing driver, turn up, drive the car, disappear. And that's kind of what he likes, isn't it? It's probably going to bring the best out in him and take him right back to the early days possibly where he just gets in and drives the race car. So, uh, yeah, that'll be, that'll be an interesting thing but I think George will go well um, we're still questions which were there before we went live obviously but thank you very much this is from Shalabaza the bolt struck this is going to be the best video 24 ha <laughs> can't wait well I hope I hope you're enjoying it because um, there's a lot more to come uh, a lot more things we have to talk about so let's have a look at this. Lee Kambage, what's he? Hi, Peter. Now, I wonder if Christian Horner was correct about people from Lewis's camp approaching Red Bull for a seat. The Sky Sports guys were saying, ooh, Lewis would never leave Merck. Were they? Um, I think Lewis, I think Lewis um, always wanted an option of, well, two options of if you're going to leave a team like Mercedes with whom he's won these championships I think it's uh, you're always going to want to know that you've got places to go if you're starting to really think about that and that's what Fernando Alonso didn't get right when he left Ferrari he just assumed that he'd get a Red Bull drive and then it never happened they never picked up the phone to talk to him and I think Lewis would have put feelers out and he would have he would have thought 
yeah, you know, okay, I understand. You're going to keep Max, so forget it. I don't want to do it. And then he would have thought Ferrari. It is the only option. But equally, it's a great option, and they want me. And Freddie Vasseur's there. I don't think Lewis would be going there if Freddie Vasseur wasn't running the team. I really think that's part of it. And it's the, it's Freddie's done a great job persuading Lewis to do this. And he wants Lewis because he knows Lewis really well. And he, he knows that, yep, you've either got Charles Leclerc and... Ollie Berman or you got Charles Leclerc and Lewis Hamilton and then Ollie Berman and he's probably thinking yeah okay we'll go we'll go with Lewis for two years where's the downside it's such a great thing for Ferrari and chances are you know Lewis is that good if we got half reasonable car he's going to win races too so I think it's all that but as I say a lot of it is going to be how Charles reacts if Lewis does start to go well or has a break or two, lucky break or two with the car, which Charles doesn't have early on. And, and how, how sh that'll be when Freddie will be really earning his money to keep the, uh, keep the, keep the thing on an even keel then. Um, so another one from Lee. How do you see the relationship between Lewis and Toto with him going to their rivals? He clearly doesn't have faith that they'll have a bit. Yeah, we, you know, as we just talked about, I think it's, it's going to be quite difficult. I think it's going to be very difficult because um, it'll be just at light at light level, won't it? Whatever it is they enjoy, whether it's probably not backgammon, it's, I'm sure it's not golf either. I don't know what it is, but they probably there's probably something they got in common that they quite enjoy, darts or whatever, and um, they'll go and do that stuff. And the conversations will all be quite light. And um, you know, will there be any more? If George finishes second in a difficult car and Lewis has a bad race and they make a bad call and he finishes seventh. Are we going to get any more of that stuff from Toto on the radio saying, Lewis, this is not good enough from our point of view. You deserve more. This is, uh, you know, this is not acceptable. We will have to do better. Are we going to get any of that stuff anymore? Probably not. And, uh, and equally, you know, if George is on, gets momentum and starts to really uh, get ahead of Lewis in a number of areas, not necessarily on the racetrack, but just in terms of setup and understanding the car and, and all the stuff that comes from being working one on one with all the engineers. Um, you know, will Lewis then Lewis will he just be a, a he'll just be a basic race driver, won't he? And there won't be anybody that really he can talk to. I wouldn't have thought, apart from his own engineering team, and because Toto's going to be all Toto's focus is going to be now is to get a hundred percent from George Russell to make George Russell the best racing driver he can make him in a year. And that'll be interesting to see as well how that goes. Gandalf the Fool. Hi, Peter. Hope you're doing well. Does Lewis's decision implicitly say this year's Mercedes would be nowhere near the Red Bull? Otherwise, I don't see why Lewis has made up his mind now. Um, well, yeah, we, we've been touching on this all the time. I, I, I think Lewis is thinking... I. I Nobody, Lewis Hamilton, nobody at Mercedes knows whether or not the new car is going to be one tenth slower than a Red Bull everywhere or three tenths slower or maybe one tenth quicker. Nobody knows. They think, and everybody has a sort of feeling based on what's happened for the last two years, they think they'll probably be, I don't know, three tenths away, maybe four tenths. Uh, but if they can get a sweet spot that's more consistent over a season, maybe they can have a much better year and then they can get closer for 2025. That's probably the way they're thinking. But I don't think that was just like, oh, if that's the case, I'm leaving. I think from Lewis's point of view, he's always, as I've said, from day one, ever since Abu Dhabi, he's either going to retire or he's going to leave Mercedes. I've been saying that since Abu Dhabi and I'm staggered that it's taken this long. And OK, there might have been contracts in place, but they're all made to be broken, aren't they? Let's face it. And I think it's not before time that Lewis is leaving because not because I mean obviously if the car was winning and he won two more world champs it'd be a different thing but it's not only because of that he because it was such a massive thing Abu Dhabi he needed to go to a completely different world breathe different air eat different food and listen to different music and definitely switch off from everything that happened before and become a new person almost obviously with the same dazzling talent as a racing driver and that's what he's doing now. That's what will happen at Ferrari. It'll be so different for him, but that's good. And he knows that's what he needs. In a way, it's a shame it's not happening right now, isn't it? But anyway, um, so Gandalf the Fool says, some people 
are saying the whole Lewis move to Ferrari is just a commercial thing set up by Formula One management. Any thoughts? But it's a commercial thing in that, as I say, he's getting north of 60, which means conservatively 70, maybe 80, plus all the additional sponsorship revenue he's going to get from a personal basis. So let's assume he's somewhere near 100. Um, that's the commercial thing. F1 management involved in all that? I don't think so. If they're not capable of admitting the Andretti team into the Formula One grid, I don't think they're very capable of engineering driver moves from one team to another. Definitely not. Um, finally, a technical question. What is the area in which drivers differ most from one another? Is it the ability to feel the surface consistently or suppleness or something else? Well, certainly suppleness is something that if you, if you take Max Verstappen as uh, as a good starting point and you assume that he's a very supple driver where all his movements are very soft and there are no spikes and he doesn't it, there are no lumps in what he does and the car isn't jerked around everything is done very very smoothly then at the other end of the extreme you have racing drivers who have great reflexes and are brave and brake late and get the power on early and can hold a slide but do none of that stuff with the stuff with the same level of softness as as Max Verstappen and that will and that will not necessarily over one lap mean a lot but over a race distance it'll mean a massive amount so that is the biggest thing in my view is suppleness I think you can have long corners you can be you know you can be very very good in one specific area but not so good in others maybe um, but if you're supple you can do a lot you can warn the car you, you're not reacting to the car you're warning the car you're manipulating the car which is why you often see drivers like Max or Charles or especially uh, Lewis um, with an onboard you see the steering movements are incredibly smooth and limited and it's not because they've suddenly got a much better car than their teammate who's doing a lot of this it's just that they're doing everything balancing it with their feet and their pedals and the footwell area and the inputs of the steering none of which you can really see measurably but you can actually see how smooth they are with the steering and that's um and that's what it's all about as i say Atten senna was not uh, not a short corner driver he didn't he wasn't into getting into the corner early he was just into braking to perfection and coming out of the brake pedal pressure at exactly the right rate and getting the power on at exactly the right way blip, 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 blip. Um, but he was brilliant you know absolutely brilliant he was the, the epitome of that specific art and but Max has that same touch but he makes the corners a bit shorter so he's actually driving a shorter lap apart from anything else and he's not the only one on the grid that, that thinks that way um, Gandalf says thanks a lot well thank you thanks very much for the questions and everything this is there's nothing on that one at all what's all this um, all right um, just I'm just having to scroll down a bit just to see where we're at um, wow it's a lot of questions we're supposed to be going to the movies tonight um, looks like there's some spam going on people being annoying but anyway um, so here's Eddie Moretti another super chat thank you Eddie uh, Peter assuming 24 and evolution of the 23 car how does Lewis's driving style mesh with Ferrari engineering I see it as a wickedly fast and finessed combination but maybe that's because I want to yeah I don't think we should complicate I don't think anybody should overcomplicate this um, in terms of driving style and will the car be suited to this particular driver or that particular driver a quick car is a quick car and a quick car has a lot of grip more grip than anybody else on the circuit and it has a great balance that you can easily sort based on the characteristics of the circuit the characteristics of the weather the characteristics of the tires that you're on and the degradation level that you've got if you can do all those things with ease and you've got a grip level higher than everybody else's really you know all you have to do is then drive it pretty well and you're going to win grand prix and so you don't need to adapt the question is how you drive a car that isn't very good that doesn't have great grip and therefore if you if you uh if you increase the wing to give it a bit more grip 
what are you going to do about your top speed then and how do you balance that out and then equally if you take the wing out just to make sure you've got top speed what are you going to do with the understeer or the poor traction and those are the things and those that's always been the case in motorsport that's not 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 characteristic of this era it's characteristic of every era going back to the auto union well not auto union because they didn't have wings okay good point uh let's say that any any era post wings where you could play around with the top speed of the car versus the grip of the car and so going back to say 68 really for that and um ever since then it's always been that and some drivers can do that really well in a bad car and others can't so the great drivers are actually at their best or showing showing up at their best in bad cars and quite often you don't see a great driver in a great car we just happen to be seeing one right now and it's max verstappen in a red bull and that's why he's so good that's why he's winning so many races and makes it look like he's on another planet to quote gerhard berger last week and but doesn't happen that often quite often the great drivers aren't in the best cars and and because you know formula one is like that so um i think the bottom line is if the ferrari has more grip on a consistent level basis than the mercedes which i think it does at the moment may not by the end of 24 but let's assume let's assume that's how it is at the end of this year i think lewis will be very pleasantly surprised at the grip level and the balance of the ferrari and he will really enjoy that and he'll drive the car really well and he'll come back a little bit more with his short corners that he's always had uh from the formula three days and and you will see him driving really well. And part of that sort of, oh, this is such a nice car stuff sort of stuff will actually enhance his driving and his confidence, of course. And that's a, that's a very important point as well. And I think it will. I think the odds of the Ferrari actually being a worse car than the Mercedes at the end of 24 are pretty small. Let's hope they're both good and they're both very near the Red Bull for the sake of the championship. But we can't assume that. Another super tra- chat from Sujith, who's just who's just donating a hundred thousand dollars oh no <laughs> i don't know what currency that is either i'm sure it's very kind thank you so much for that Shujith. very kind robert kubitza has got his ferrari dream drive finally he's going to be driving a customer ferrari hypercar at of course happy for him good for robert well isn't that good because robert well lewis has got a lot of time for robert and i'm sure robert has for lewis and i think they're pretty good mates actually so i thought we'll be hanging out i can see them hanging out and lewis having fun in a ferrari hypercar wouldn't that be good i'd love to see lewis doing one of those things actually it's an interesting point isn't it that um you know lewis mercedes don't actually have a sports car team do they but ferrari do and if lewis said oh i want to do some sports car racing do le mans they'll probably say yeah yeah go for it um that would be fun wouldn't it um, I'm getting a bit confused here with more of my questions. Sorry, I'm, I'm sort of sounding a little bit bemused because um, let me get another one. Sujith, uh, same question. Same guy. Thank you very much, sir. As an Indian, I think Formula One is too big for India now. Should India go for World Endurance Championship? Maybe develop the racing and engineering culture a bit to attract sponsors. Well, that's what I'm doing. And company with Shub and others with the academy the engineering academy in India so um, it's been on plenty of the descriptions of videos I've done so I'm trying to do all I can to encourage racing engineering in universities with Shub in in India so that's a good thing um, India is too big for, well if India's if Formula One's too big for India, that's a very sad indictment of Formula One, isn't it? Because India should be in Formula One. We should have an Indian Grand Prix. We should have a South African Grand Prix and and plenty of others we should have a argentine grand prix probably so i think it's um it's wrong to say that and yeah they can go at wec uh, emerson fittipaldi got involved with putting on a wec race in brazil not so long ago and lost a fortune on it i think so i wouldn't encourage that i think you could it's an easy way to lose money putting on those races maybe it's the wrong thing to say but as i understand it, i don't see where the I don't see where the profit is for the circuit promoter if you're putting on a WEC because you're not going to get it from TV rights. You're not going to get it from the gate. So where is it going to come from? Formula One shouldn't be too big for anything, really. It's, you know, it's a sport. It's not a business. It's a sport. It's not a business. I repeat it. <laughs> yeah, right, Windsor. 
what do you know about it um right i'm scrolling rapidly back to the top now because i don't know how many questions there are um here that i haven't answered already uh i think i don't know if i've missed any here but i'm gonna go for this one martin lee from copenhagen hi martin um good to copenhagen yeah lovely city who is the top five drivers and how on the top sorry who is, who is the top five drivers and how on the top I'm not quite sure i understand the question um who do i think are the top five drivers uh i shy away from all those questions about top five top ten top three who are the greatest drivers of all time because it's uh i think it's very difficult to have top five you could say well i can say i think max lewis and charles are the top three but i wouldn't want to split hairs over the next two that would be in there and two that would be out there are too many good guys out there so yeah i hope not a very good answer but that's my thing uh discarding a young and talented science for 39 year old lewis hamilton who admitted he's lost his spark for racing question mark could this be another big strategy mistake from ferrari well i think as i say you know I, I, the, the, all the signs were when charles renewed on that long new long-term deal big money um that they were thinking we're going to go with we're going to put our eggs into the Charles Leclerc basket. He is the guy that's most likely to win a championship for us. And we, we've realized that having two is Carlos Sainz. But maybe he's the winner because he'll go, potentially he could go to Audi. Uh, that's one team. He could possibly go to Mercedes, couldn't he? And equally, he could go to Red Bull. They might have him back as well, alongside Max. I say... As I understand it, Red Bull are going to run Alex Albon, but um, that's not 100%. That's only 90, 90, what did I say, 90% or 95, 100, 90. Um, so uh, Carlos has got some options. And the good news is he can think about them now. And maybe he's even done a deal with Audi. Some people are saying he has. And he can, he can go to sleep at night knowing what he's going to be doing at the end of this season. And I hope that is the case because he's done a good job in the last 12 months particularly and he deserves to have a little bit more security than that, I think. Okay, I'm not quite sure what this is all about. Um, Jim Bob, I take it Lewis's insight into Mercedes' current progress means they're still nowhere near Red Bull. Yeah, I think we've covered that point. Um, but I don't think he's got any more insight than... He's got more insight than you or I, for sure. But equally... I don't think anybody knows yet until the cars actually hit the road and we see how they do stack up. He may think, oh, this guy's left and that guy's left. It's going to be difficult for Mercedes now. But then, you know, Lewis isn't an engineer at the end of the day. He's a racing driver. So I wouldn't put Lewis's assessment of what he thinks the new Merck's going to do. I wouldn't give it that much credence because at the start of 22, before the car turned a wheel, he probably thought the Mercedes was a great car. Why didn't, if, if Lewis is a great engineer, why didn't he talk about the porpoising before the car hit the road? So he didn't. Um, I think Darth Lord Raven says, I can only hear one thing, plan B, plan B. <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is Ferrari, you know, their radio stuff. Plan B, plan C, plan X, plan Y. Charles, what do you think? Question. Um, okay, Paris Sataja. Peter, what do you think about Alonso's chances going to Mercedes? Uh, that's an interesting one. Get an even older driver. <laughs> um, would they do that? I mean, you've got to think why. I mean, Red Bull didn't sign Fernando because they think he's quite divisive in a team. And yes, he's probably mellowed a bit. And at Aston Martin, he's had to sort of toe the line a bit and be nice to Lance and... That's all going quite well. He's obviously still really quick and really good. Yeah, I suppose it's possible. Anything's possible. I mean, it's possible that the board at Mercedes are saying to, to Toto, you've got to have an established world champion driver in the car. Otherwise, we're thinking of, of leaving the sport, in which case he's going to get Fernando Alonso, isn't he? 
he's pretty good, I think, Toto, at selling what he wants to his sponsors and to the board. And I don't know. They seem to be raving about Kimi Antonelli. And George could have a very, very good year. And that's, the, that's where they could be going. But if, if they're struggling, they, um, they might well take Fernando. So, yeah, you, yeah I, I can't, I don't know. Just have to wait and see on that one, I really, I think. Is Fernando under contract at the end of 20? Probably, yeah, he probably did a two-year deal, didn't he? Which is what he was not offered at Alpine. Yeah, it probably, yeah, does expire, expire at the end of 24. And he would be on the phone to Toto, I would imagine. Yeah, good point about that. Um, Alex says... Lewis knows when to exit. Look at the McLaren Mercedes move. Everyone thought he was crazy, but look at what happened later. Likewise, everybody thinks this move to Ferrari is crazy. We'll see. Do they? I don't think it's crazy at all. I think I congratulate Lewis for doing it. And I think um, I'm just surprised he didn't do it sooner. I think it's a great thing for him. He needed to do it after Abu Dhabi and everything else and where he is in his career and to re-motivate himself. Absolutely the right move. I'm excited about it. I really am. And I and I could go very well. It could go very well. It's about time, you know, Ferrari had another of their huge resurgence, isn't it? Um, I'm going to read all these through before I go, because there have been a couple of unpleasant ones. Will Lewis be a fix for Ferrari? Uh, Soren Ingram says, will Lewis be a fix for, for Ferrari tyre dig? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether he's, he's any better at managing tyres that are starting to go away than Charles Leclerc, who's pretty good at that. Um, so, but what, I'd be interested to hear what Lewis thinks of all the discussion on the radio and all that stuff. I think, that, I'm sure Freddie Vasseur will be getting on top of all that. I think we're starting to see Freddie really having an imprint on Ferrari and it's tightening up in quite a few areas and they're getting rid of, I think all the committee stuff is going away and I think it'll become a proper race team by the time Lewis gets there. I would imagine so anyway. So, um, yeah. So, what was the last time Ferrari won a championship? Well, it was Kimi, wasn't it? Oh, what, oh seven, I guess. So, um, yeah, it's been a while. And that was the back end of the sort of everyone had left, but there was still the sort of momentum from the Ross Braun era was there, and it sort of kept rolling. And Kimi drove well and wasn't quite as quick as he'd been in his McLaren days, but won the championship. Um, Thomas Haller, Red Bull Racing stopped 2023 development earlier than any other team to develop the 24 car. Yeah, they did. I think there's a bit of argy-bargy about when they could actually start developing the 24 car. How on earth you would police that? I've got no idea. But yeah, um, so it's, uh, they will. I mean, it's not only that they've got a head start. They've got all the building blocks they need even if they got a late start they've got all the building blocks they need in to know where they want to go in 24 and 25 for that matter and all the building blocks are correct building blocks isn't they're not crumbly ones that are slightly off skew that is the case for all the other formula one teams because they haven't had such a strong previous two three three years and uh, and that's why red bull in theory just get better and better and better not in theory in reality um new regulations engine regs for 26 lewis found the next champions maybe um i think you know i think if you're looking at the new engine regulations and trying to make your decision on that 26 50 percent electrification and a few other things uh, i think you'd say mercedes are probably gonna have a very good engine would you not say that i would uh, i would think that red bull and Ford will, will do a very good job on that as well. Renault I'd be slightly dubious about, I think, even though the Twingo was maybe one of the first electric cars, was it not? And uh, who else is there? Um, so I don't, Hon you know, I, Honda with Aston Martin. I don't, uh, I don't think it's that. I, I think the Mercedes will probably be the best engine in 26, to be honest. So, you know, we'll see. I don't think it was that was a decision. CL16 and LH44, Charles and Lewis get along well. I bet the relationship will be less toxic than it was with George. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think, you know, 
Lewis sees Charles. I mean, they had their moments, didn't they? When was that massive moment they had at Monza when Charles won the Italian Grand Prix and, you know, edged Lewis off under breaking into the second chicane? They weren't very, very good friends then. But I think in general, you know, Charles is a very, very good guy, uh, a good human being, actually, I think. And I'm, I'm saying that and it sounds, sounds condescending, but what I mean is he's a very good person, I think. And he... And he's a well-rounded, mature person. And I think Lewis is a well-rounded, mature person. And I think they're both um, relatively low-key in a way. There's not a lot of you know, shouting and screaming and doing daft things. They just, you know, they're cool and they'll, they'll mesh quite well. Obviously, they won't be that close because they're going to be really close on the racetrack. And when it's like that, it's never... They're never great buddies, are they? But I think in terms of being compatible, whatever that means in a Formula One team, with Freddy Vassour there, I think they'll be pretty good. Um, so this is Rian replying actually to Perez. I'm interested to get his opinion though on, on Fernando. Um, Mercedes wouldn't trust Alonso. Mercedes don't need a driver to develop their cars. Unlike Aston, they need someone they can depend on long term. So you're saying they wouldn't trust Alonso. What does that mean, I wonder? Probably not to sort of blow the team apart as he did at kind of at McLaren after one year with Lewis and then at Ferrari with Massa. Um, hi, Peter. This is from Wittjeburg. Uh, probably mispronounced that. Do you think Hamilton will be able to beat Max? Uh, well, I think in equal cars, for sure, he can have a lot of close races with Max and probably be 50-50 as we saw in 2021. But I think... Um, right now, I don't think so. No, I think Mas I think Red Bull, as I said, I think Red Bull will be the class car again. But I think Ferrari will have closed the gap a little bit, their gap, to Red Bull. And they'll be ahead of Mercedes. And I think McLaren will continue to go pretty well. They've got a good team there. They're getting good people. And uh, I think they're just looking like they'll continue the momentum that they've started to build. And I've, and I've said a few times, uh, and I've got to write it down. What's that team called? The um, Visa Cash App Red Bull team, which is Alpha Tari or Minardi, whatever you want to call it, uh, will go quite well. I mean, they've just got Alan Permain, Tim Goss from McLaren, Alan, Alan, uh, Tim Goss from the FIA and McLaren, um, Alan Permain, obviously, next ex Alpine stroke Benetton, and Gajam Cataloni, a Red Bull engineer. They're getting good people there now, aren't they, at that team? And Daniel Ricciardo, Yuki Tsunoda, it's a pretty good driver lineup. I mean, Daniel's the other guy that will be hoping he can get into a Red Bull or possibly a Mercedes. Excited about um, Daniel. So there we go. Um, I've done that one from Eddie Moretti. Thank you. I'm just looking through. My gut feeling Alonso will stay at Aston Martin, says Perez Sataja. Sataja. Um, so, any chance of a Hulkenberg seat warmer until Antonelli? Uh, Russell Hulkenberg. Actually, I was thinking this morning that I still think Kevin Magnussen is super quick. And I'm sure there are not many people that agree with me, but uh, if, if you wanted a really quick guy, you know, you just put him in a really quick car again. Sorry, a very good team. Hopefully a really good car, Mercedes. And he would do a good job. So it's not as if they don't have a lot of drivers from which they can choose Mercedes. It's just whether how they'll react to all that and whether they'll get the right guy. As I say, I think, you know, obviously Antonelli's good. I think Vesti's good. Nobody talks about Vesti. This guy is very, very good, believe me. Um... So I've just, I've had to press the blue arrow at the bottom to stop because it's frozen. There are so many questions. I think that's, I'm saying that anyway. It looks like, it, yeah, it looks like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. <laughs> it's just going up and up the number of questions we got here. And I'm a little bit um, nervous because it's already an hour, over an hour I've been doing this and I haven't got all night. I'm still going up to find out where I was. This is ridiculous. Well, it's unbelievably touching that people are expressing themselves here. Anyway, I'm going back. Um, Corre says, I don't think George is a natural first driver. Hmm. He did a lot of winning in F2 and F3, didn't he? GP3, F2, whatever it was. Um, 
don't know how you would judge that. I think you, you may be right. I don't know what you mean by first driver. I mean, sometimes it just builds up. You just find yourself in that position. All of a sudden you're winning. I mean, he's, he can win races. We know that. So what is a first driver if it's a guy, if it isn't a guy that can win races? Um, I, let's see how George goes this year. He's, he'll have everything going for him and we'll be able to form an opinion as to whether he will be the next big Mercedes star driver this year. Okay, that's what I think. Um, so, Marco Reese, good morning, afternoon, night, <laughs> wherever you may be. Peter in chat, thank you very much. Good morning. Um, the game Borg says he's agreeing with my point about George. Um, as he wanted the, the number one seat so bad, it's kind of a graceful exit. Now it's King George. Yeah. Um, so Ferrari actually finished the year very well, didn't they? Um, NJO points out Ferrari is faster, but Merck finished ahead in constructors. This is the reason. Yeah, but I think Ferrari finished the year surprisingly well. It's quite a good car at the end of 2023, the Ferrari. So they've got a lot of momentum now. Um, oh, Nadal thinks that Lewis will beat George in 24 just to prove that Merck overrates George. Well, if he does then George is out, I would say, because if George Russell's going to do anything, it's going to be this year. He's got the momentum. He's the driver. Potentially, they're going to keep for the future. He's going to have all the attention of the of the engineers and everything else, everything going for him. So he should he should beat Lewis, not not completely, but certainly more than 50 percent of the time. He should if he's going to be the next guy to lead Mercedes. Walter Sch Werner Schultz, is Carlos underrated in Formula One? I think he's a very good and a great team man. Yeah, I think he is all of those things. He's got, you know, he, the style of driving. I don't think this is what people who are, people who are, who are not massively into Carlos Sainz being the next um, Kimi Antonelli, don't say, oh, it's because of the way he drives. They say it's because, well, you know, maybe he's a bit, emotional or erratic or something they might want to say which is actually quite meaningless i think he's actually got a very good approach to racing and i think he does really well but i think his problem is that he isn't developing as his corners are too long basically and he gives himself too big a handicap every time he gets in a racing car he's got most of the talent that you need in order to be really really good sort of le leclerc level but he doesn't, but he always gives himself the handicap of having such long corners going in, going in wide, you know, long braking area, breaks late into it, but long, if you see what I mean, it extends the straight and um, in a straight line and then turns in very late. And, and it's just a messy way of driving uh, if you're alongside a guy like Charles Leclerc. And he doesn't seem to be changing a little bit, but not much. And I think he's still mystified as to why Charles is as quick as he is. And... Um, but I'd say, you know, Lando versus Carlos Sainz. It's an interesting comparison. I'm sure most people at the moment, that seems to be a big thing about Lando, would say Lando. But I think Carlos is not far away from Lando in, in terms of the way he drives. And his corners are perhaps a little bit longer than Lando's, but he's not far away from Lando. Speaking of Lando Norris, here's a guy, and we haven't really, nobody's asking about this, but talk about why did he rush into signing such a long-term contract, new contract with McLaren now? Why did he, he didn't need to do that? It was obvious that McLaren would want to keep him because Zach Brown's been supporting him and he's been part of the Zach Brown thing for, I don't know how many years now, going back to Formula 3. So that was never going to go away. And But there were potentially going to be options at Mercedes, Ferrari, and maybe Red Bull. So if you're Lando Norris, and it's the sort of on everybody's lips as the, one of the great stars of the future, and you're a good guy, and you race well, why wouldn't you have kept your options open at least for three or four months, up till say Monaco? Why sign now? And it hasn't worked out very well for him, in my opinion. Yeah, he's got a nice deal with McLaren, but uh, he's still got Oscar Piastri in the other car, who isn't slow. And he's now got no chance of getting the Mercedes drive or the Red Bull drive. And it's going to go to Alex Albon. You know, if you're Lando Norris, you're thinking, well, I'm better than Albon, surely. And and he's get, looks like he's going to get the Red Bull drive in 25. So I find that a really odd bit of planning. I, I, all credit to Zach Brown for pushing Lando into signing 
as early as he has. That's all I can assume that Zach just made it one of his missions of the winter to get Lando signed up and he's got him. And, uh, you know, if I was managing Lando, I'd be thinking, well, if I was Lando and I'd followed my manager's advice, I wouldn't be very impressed, I have to say. But then you got it's obviously up to Lando. I mean, he, he's got the brain. And why, why did he do that? Why did he rush into it like that? He doesn't know how it's going to work out this year. Maybe he thinks, it's the only thing I can think of, that he's, he knows that Piastri's not easy to beat and he's quick and he's going to get better. So maybe one of the ways to counter that is to do this nice long-term deal at McLaren where he's sort of there as the number one driver or however he wants to be perceived. And that will have a bit of a sort of quietening, dampening effect on Oscar Piastri. Maybe that's what he's thinking. And he never thought beyond in terms of, wow, I could be in a Mercedes or I could be in a, in a, in a Red Bull. Maybe it's that. I don't know. Well, maybe he just thinks, I like McLaren. That's how I like going racing with McLaren. I don't want to drive for anybody else. A mega team, golf, whatever. Speaking of which, I have to say I was a bit disappointed. DP World, I don't even know what they do really, but I know they're massive and it's Middle East money and they sponsor the European Tour, Golf Tour. It used to be called the European Tour. Now it's called the DP World Tour. And they also are, I think they're a McLaren sponsor. And... The, and there was a video and there was a, some sort of thing, Lando Norris and, um, you know, various golfers uh, doing stuff. And I thought, wow, that's going to be quite interesting because we'll actually see how Lando golf swing is. Because you can actually tell quite a lot about an athlete, if they are quite good at golf, how they actually hit the ball and their timing and their rhythm and their flexibility and everything else. You could tell quite a lot about Carlos Sainz and when he was at the Ryder Cup and we saw a few shots there. But the video came through and there was just nothing. You know, it was Tommy Fleetwood and Tommy Fleetwood driving a golf buggy or something and sort of very rapid pictures, couldn't see anything and complete disappointment and waste actually. So anyway, on from that. Um, and I'm a big fan of everything to do with DP World and golf. I was just very disappointed we didn't see more of it. I'd love to see, I'd love to have seen Tommy Fleetwood criticizing Lando's golf swing and lots of slow-mos of it. And I'd love to have seen Lando sitting next to Tommy Fleetwood as he was driving a McLaren around Silverstone and, and Lando teaching Tommy how to drive. Wouldn't that have been fun? That's what you really want to see in things like that. I love it when they switch over their skills like that. Um, Aaron Taylor says, Abu Dhabi 21 broke Mercedes. We can debate what happened, but we can't debate the effect. Lewis knows they're cooked. Yeah, and I make the point, what happened after Abu Dhabi 21 really broke Mercedes because they should have done more about that. They should have done more uh, in the courts. Good one, anonymous. Mick, question mark. Very, very good point. Nobody's talking about Mick Schumacher and he's another one that is in the, it should be in the frame. I mean, he's a Mercedes... Uh, whatever he is, reserve driver. I'm sure he is the third driver, isn't he? And and Toto's put out various press releases saying how good he is and he's very underrated. Well, you know, if you really believe that, Toto, let's see it. You know, let's get Mick in the car and see how well he goes. Russell Schumacher. I don't think, you know, people would say, oh, forget it. You know, I think Mick Schumacher is actually a bit like Frederick Vesti, very underrated. And, and, and it's, it's because he's not flavor of the month. Nobody wants to talk about it. But I think he's really talented still and with proper management. And he's got enough time this year to be properly managed and groomed. I think he could do a very good job. Um, OK, I mentioned Siesta about Lewis, you know, music drifting out through the thing. We don't do siestas in Italy, but we enjoyed a good espresso. Yeah, I agree with you. You don't. We do them here in Spain. But what you do is you have... Um, you have those late, long, late pasta lunches, and invariably the, you know, Enzo Ferrari's there, but he's not around anymore. I know, but he's there, or the equivalent thereof, but having a glass of red wine, and nobody really feels like doing it any for an hour or two, do they? Until uh, you know, it's all worn off. That's my point, really. I, I call that siesta. I know they were actually sleeping, but they're kind of you know, in a daze. <laughs> uh, the only main thing. This swap says to me, says Darth Lord Raven, is that Mercedes didn't get a good car very soon. Lewis knows this very well. He takes his changes elsewhere. I, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I understand where everyone's saying it. I'm, I think you give Lewis too much credit for being able to know exactly how good or bad the car's going to be before it's turned a wheel. I don't believe he does. And as I say, if he did, why was he going on about how good the 22 car was going to be before it hit the road? Um, 
Now, Nubia, possibly offending here, but let's see. Sorry to offend, but George Russell is a PR merchant with no personality. Mercedes have to bring his GF to give him personality. Um, well, yeah. I can't, I, I, I think he's got, I know George pretty well. I think he's got a lot of personality. He's a great guy. I mean, if that's how Mercedes present him these days or how he's shown on those ridiculous soundbite things they do on TV, then more's the pity because he's actually a very cool guy who's a total racer and I love spending time with George. The little time that I ever have spent with him, he's been mega. So I, I wouldn't agree with that. I, my personal understanding of George, that's not how he is at all. I think he's got a lot of personality, but um, I've no idea how people perceive him based on all the weird TV coverage that we have these days. Um, what was all this? Alex says, Lewis woke up and saw 2021 for what it was when Mercedes didn't put on enough fight to contest that. Well, there you go. I totally agree with you. Totally agree with that. Um, yeah, Van Balzup says, George needs a few patches before he wins a championship. I'm quite sure what that means. Patches of what? Um, <laughs> it's a good talk about an obscure question I'm not sure I know the answer to this at all guy guy it's from how come Freddie Vasseur kept Marcus Ericsson instead of Pascal Verlein who scored all of Sauber's points back in 2017 before Charles Leclerc joined in 2018 well I think you will find that Marcus Ericsson had a massive amount of money at the time and that's the reason I don't think there's anything no secret about that a massive amount of money and um, included the guy that I think started Husky Chocolate what happened to Husky Chocolate it was on the McLarens for a while and we got all these press releases about Husky Chocolate and all of a sudden it disappears and it's not there anymore I wonder who what happened there um, but no but it was all to do with money wasn't it so Fred you know I mean, at those levels uh, even where, where, back where they were, renter drivers were much more important than anything else. You had to pay the bills, mate. Uh, 59 Chicago, <laughs> and what a name. Chicago in 59, probably very, very cool city, I imagine. Um, Stun Lewis is headed to Ferrari. His talent is wasting away the past three years with a bad car. Oh, I shouldn't have that terrible word on there, but is Ferrari any better? I'll take that off the screen before I answer that. Um, yeah, I think Ferrari is better. As I say, I think Ferrari will be a bit nearer Red Bull than they were last year and they weren't that bad by the end of the year a pretty good car by the end of the year and I think they'll be ahead of Mercedes this year as I say how they'll be at the end of 24 is another matter and I think they'll be not all right going into into 25 I say all right I don't think they'll be absolutely winning the championship with ease but I think they'll be in with a fight in 25 that's my feeling about Ferrari the good people they're getting now Freddie Vasseur's management Charles Lewis you know there'll be a big change at Ferrari now and I think in the whole atmosphere at Ferrari and I think it's a good thing I think it's a very good thing um suspicious f question mark I'm not quite sure what that means but it's probably a good thing to have on the screen while I was doing that um Aaron Taylor I bet they still have the driver out front like an old COE lorry Lewis probably called Fred while he was getting his seat fitting done yeah well absolutely you know I think I think uh, oh you mean the Mercedes a bit they still have the front front engine you mean yeah <laughs> Mercedes uh, you know they need to get it together don't they they've, they've got such a great history in Formula One that it's kind of well it's sad in a way that that things are going the way they are for them and let's hope they have a half reasonable time if you think back it was what pre-world war one mercedes were absolutely brilliant then obviously pre-world war two they were absolutely brilliant then in the 50s they're absolutely brilliant then in recent times they've been brilliant and they haven't pulled out yet but they're not you're not going well so you know the history shows that they never they never get it wrong for too long in fact they've never got it this wrong for this long so yeah it's a weird thing Lewis is in a win-win situation 100 million dollars a year makes him the highest paid Formula One driver and highest paid athlete in the world is he uh, I don't know about the world but um, 
Yeah, I think, and Charles Leclerc won't be that far away. As I say, both of them will be north of 60 in terms of retainer, and Charles will have his deals as well. He won't have as many deals as Lewis. And I don't, will Lewis be at 100? I don't know, maybe. Um, but but Charles won't be that, he'd be, if, if Lewis is there, if Charles is the second best, then isn't he? second place, which would be interesting. Um, I wonder what George is on. 1.3. Uh, yeah, as I say, he'll be going for a pay rise this year, that's for sure. For sure, says Rasmus, and I just said for sure as well. Can you see a split? Oh, here we go, that's an interesting one. Um, TJ, can you see a Formula One split from the FIA? There seems to be a lot of decisions that the teams don't like. Madrid Grand Prix, for example. Well, it's not the FIA, is it, really, that's doing these things? It's Liberty, because they want lots of street circuits where all the money is and all the commerce is, and they just sort of, that's the key thing. Can the circuit, afford, can the city afford it? And if so, let's put this circuit as much as we can in the middle of the city and we'll squeeze it in wherever we have to with three DRS zones and long straights so that we'll have lots of overtaking. That's basically where they're at. And a lot of us are complaining about that, including me. Um, I made the point at the announcement of the Madrid thing last week when they were going on about 140, 150,000 people. Uh, I think David Coulthard has said something like, oh, well, you know, that's a joke because to get them there, they're all going to go by train. And I don't think Formula One spectators like to travel by train. Well, I totally understand what he's saying but I don't think he's right because I think they get I may be wrong I think they get at least 100,000 of the Canadian Grand Prix and I would suspect at least 90,000 of those all travel by train to the to the track from downtown Montreal so I don't there's no evidence that for and Suzuka's another one they all go by train there as well so I can't imagine that and in, in Spain living here in Spain people love going by train you know they're packed all the time so I can't imagine that that is an issue at all more of an issue is the like all these things how does it make money and and it, formula one race promotion is a very difficult thing to make money from and with because all the rights effectively go to formula one and you put on a really expensive race like madrid and yes you get your hundred fifty thousand spectators and you can charge them a lot of money and probably there'll be enough Spectators who will have that amount of money and will come to the race, but it still will only scratch the surface at the cost of putting on that race. So most of it's going to have to be underwritten by the Madrid government, and uh, it was an expensive race to put on. I think, I think they're, I think they've outbidded Barcelona by something like sixty million euros, sixty million euros a year, uh, in terms of the, the appearance fee, whereas Barcelona were paying something in the thirty-two region. So it's a bit of a no-brainer if that money's guaranteed. But having signed the deal, that's a lot of money to come up with every year, particularly if the race doesn't make money profitably. And it's, it's aggravation to put on as well because it's a street circuit, semi-street circuit. So, yeah, it's interesting. Barcelona is still going ahead with a few mods and improvements. And there's talk of it possibly having a European Grand Prix title. In order to do that, as I say, they're going to have to come up with at least 45, 50, if not 60, double the, double the appearance fee money, which I don't think they're going to be able to do. Spa is another one, possibly even Monza too. So it's a lot of money. that the you know We're getting more and more circuits from very wealthy parts of the world, and they're squeezing out these poorer European tracks. And we're going to go to more and more of these um, really quite boring semi-street circuits, I'm afraid. And nobody seems to be listening to a guy called Peter Windsor who keeps saying what we should be doing is encouraging the countries that do have all this money to start building renditions of Barcelona or Spa or the Nürburgring or Suzuka so that we've got them all there and we can go racing on these great tracks in the middle of the desert in great weather. That's what should be happening. But nobody's doing that. So, um, yeah, that's my suggestion. I, I always try to be positive. I always try to be positive and not to just be negative for the sake of it. Natikit Natik Songjai. Do you think Leclerc has the same driving style as Gilles Villeneuve? I've seen a lot of people mention that Charles is the modern Gilles. Well, I can see why people say that because he's, you know, he's wild and he has the odd crash for no reason and wild. I mean, he's on the edge. And he sometimes goes off in the same corner on two different days. Not I think Gilles ever did that. He did spin seven times in the in the uh, in his first Grand Prix. 
in the 77 British Grand Prix in that McLaren M23, which wasn't a very good car at the time. So I can see why people say it. And he's also a lovable person in that Gilles was a lovable person and Charles is a great guy as well. I can see all that. I think in style of driving, Gilles, because of the era in which he raced, was very much a conventional corner guy, but with unbelievable car control and commitment and bravery and you know, would just be on the absolute limit. If Ayrton Senna was always badgering the Honda engineers to let him know how many more revs he could run before the thing actually blew up, and Alan Pross was always just backing off slightly on the straight just to make sure he had total reliability, then Jill would be talking to the Ferrari gearbox guy about how, how many times he could just use the gearbox to brake rather than the, the brakes. Just because by going into second at the last minute at Long Beach, the back, that he would lock the rear wheels and the back end would come out and then he'd just floor the throttle. Um, you know, that's how Gilles was. And he's just fabulous. And he's just larger than life kid that just loved racing. And in that sense, I think he's got a lot in common with Charles. But I don't think in terms of style that I would never say Gilles was a short corner, very compact driver in the way Charles Leclerc is when he's really on it because... He couldn't drive those cars that way, that way anyway. Well, you could because Jim Clark did and, um, and Nigel Mansell was and Carlos Reutemann was. So that's not true. But um, the Ferrari was not a great car. So he, his way of driving it was basically to just cover the understeer all the time and just use his reflexes to balance the car. And it was, you know, he was always struggling he never I mean the Ferraris he drove the only decent one really I guess was the T3 and he and I think Carlos had the edge on him there in terms of short corners in and in, in 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 78 and then in 79 he was I think he was quicker than Jody they both drove in a pretty similar way but Gilles with a bit more commitment than Jody at that point <clears throat> And then, you know, the turbo car was not very good either. So the 79 car was okay. The 78 car was okay, but the Michelins kept going off. So Gilles never really had a great racing car, if you think about it, which I am. I'm surprised that i am come to that conclusion, but I don't think he ever did, really. So, yeah, that Gilles was always driving the car, getting over the car's problems and the Michelin tyres going off and all that stuff. Uh, so... You know, but I, in many other ways, very similar. Fifty nine Chicago and again says Ferrari won again in Singapore seventy nine twenty three. So there's more chance there. Yeah, yeah. And no, Ferrari finished the. I mean, they were good at Monza, very good at Monza. Could have won Monza maybe in different circumstances, but certainly won Singapore and they finished the year pretty well. So um, Marco Ries says I think. Hamilton did his best move. His possibilities of getting the next title at Mercedes are getting lesser and lesser, not counting that if he can get the title and been that with Ferrari. Yeah, I mean, there's more chance, isn't there? I mean, he probably knows he isn't going to do it at, Ferrari, at Mercedes, but in a Ferrari, he might. Um, TKO22 says, imagine he only goes and wins another world championship with Ferrari. That will cement his legacy as the greatest of all greats. He's already the greatest of all time anyway and how many drivers can say they drove for the top three teams yep that's right now he'll enjoy it he'll enjoy ferrari it's a great thing for lewis i don't think if anybody's saying it's a crazy move then they don't really understand formula one or racing drivers in my opinion or certainly lewis hamilton it's a great move um so vladdy c says lewis Left McLaren in a similar manner, and will will Lewis have the same dedication from Ferrari? Well, yeah, of course. Ferrari will have dedication. The en they'll just get on with the engineers, just do their thing, and Freddie Vasseur will get the best from both of them as best he can until they start fighting, and uh, and Lewis will be having fun. So, at fifty nine says. Um, Ferrari's trying to get better and Mercedes seem to be losing everyone. Well, I'm sure Toto Wolff would disagree with that. But anyway, I think you're probably right. Um, the only way to replace... Guy Guy says the only way to replace Lewis Hamilton is by getting Lewis Hamilton. Yes. Um, for Lewis, this is the only one option he had. That's right. And it is the only option, but it was a good option. So he's taken it. Unlike Lando Norris, who had plenty of options and didn't take any of them. 
staying at McLaren. Not that he couldn't be okay at McLaren, but are they going to win championships in the next three to four years? Whereas he could be in a Red Bull if he'd kept his options open. First last, why announce so early? It seems like Lewis and Carlos have no real incentive this year. Well, it's not Carlos's fault, really, is it? It's, it's Lewis. But, um, you know, if Lewis had said to Ferrari, yeah, but I want to drive, but we're not going to do anything until September, then it would be a different story, wouldn't it? But um, I think in a way Lewis has done this. He's, he's just taken a burden off himself at Mercedes as well, because it's just his this year for Lewis is just going to be a breeze, isn't it? He knows what he's doing. It's going to be Ferrari, the back end of his career. And this year at Mercedes, it's just turn up, race, have fun, disappear, maybe be quick if the car's quick. If not, don't care. Isn't it that? And, and he's got rid of that whole Abu Dhabi 21. This is getting worse and worse and worse. What's happened to everything that used to be around me when I was winning races? He doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Just turns up and races. If nothing's any good, disappear, go and do something else. For, for a week and then go back to the next racetrack. Um, this is Martin Lee says, Lewis Hamilton will collide with Charles Leclerc. Always do. Well, Charles Leclerc's a very hard, tough driver. I mean, remember when, um, remember that race he had with Alex Albon in F2 in Abu Dhabi, in the last round of the championship, the sort of wheel to wheel stuff there and the nerfing that was going on. Yeah, Charles is a tough guy and there's, and, and that's certainly that thing with Lewis at Monza. So, yeah, Lewis knows that, but Lewis is very good. And we've seen that now, haven't we, with George and everybody else. He's very good at reading other drivers still and keeping out of trouble, generally speaking. Um, as per Andretti's rejection by FOAM, that was something already expected. Shameful, but expected. Well, was it? I mean, I expected it because of the way... I knew the teams would gang up against it. And because if, if Michael's got all this money, why isn't he buying Haas sort of thing, you know, and buying all Haas's problems and going racing like that? Answer, Michael doesn't want to do that. But that's the way Formula One has structured itself now with these team franchises, which are worth a ridiculous amount of money. It's all become money orientated rather than based on racing performance. And I, I'm going to make another point, which I haven't made recently, but I've made it before and I love making it. And that is that we talk about the, the the growth of the the young drivers coming into Formula One and the and the and the ladder system we have now and the academies and everything else, what do we have in terms of of succession with the teams? Why are we why don't we have any pro, Why don't we have any system in in motorsport that allows the very good teams in F two to graduate into Formula One? Very good people, and they're not allowed to do that. Oh no, no you stay where you are. Keep quiet. No, you can't be on TV, whatever, you know, go and get some more renter drivers. And this is our area. These are our franchises. They're ours because we happen to be in the right place at the right time. You know, um, it's wrong. It's, it's not a healthy thing for the sport that we're dumbing down all those really good F2 teams in terms of what they could do if they were given the opportunity to go Formula One racing. High tech being a very good example, but and then you've got Prima and ART and everybody else and dams. And it's it's wrong in my opinion. And I think the same goes for uh, the way the Andretti thing's done. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to give an opinion on whether they think the Andretti car would be competitive. How would they know? And it's completely ridiculous to say that Andretti would be struggling and they wouldn't be competitive and that wouldn't be a good look for Formula One. I mean, it's an interesting point that GM and Cadillac um, actually, as a division of liberty, apparently, that they give a lot of money to. There are something to do with software or I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's on that side, something to do with media or whatever, but quite a lot of money. In other words, they're a client of Liberty. So I'd be interested to see if there are any repercussions here because, you know, I just think it's ridiculous. I think Andretti was doing it absolutely correctly with the right time frame and everything else. And it is uh, it is shameful. Good word. Um Sadie's also need time for another driver. Yeah, well, that's right. Uh, team radio will be hilarious, says Van Balsam. I think the Ferrari, yeah, will be. I don't think um, Lewis will be on the radio that much, will he? he never, I'm sure Lewis will quite like it because he'll say, oh, I don't, I'm, pff, no, I don't want to talk about radio. And Ferrari will be quite good at saying, oh, okay, Lewis, whatever you want. A bit like when Vettel got there. Yeah, yes, yeah, Seb, yes, yeah, Seb. 
whatever he wants it. And Lewis will be in the same position. So if he doesn't want any radio, they won't give it to him. Um, so yeah, frustration of Toto. <laughs> uh, I'm getting the impression here that everybody's, you know, thinks that Mercedes are getting what they deserve, really. Um, Lee Woods has just given me a nice thing. Thank you very much, Lee. Kind of you. Got a heart there as well. Nice. Um, going back to the top here. In theory, I think everything that I've done is shaded and everything that hasn't been done hasn't been shaded, but and it's just stopped here. So I think it must be it's going back to here. Uh, Aaron White, will Lewis joining Ferrari <laughs> enable to get the best out of Charles and cut some of his mistakes? I think Charles had started to develop quite well, he says condescendingly again, uh, towards the end of last year. And I think he'd kind of, you know, he was being the Charles Leclerc again. And, and I think he'll be that Charles this year. I think you'll see a very good Charles Leclerc this year, in my opinion. And I, and I said it before, but I think... I mean, one of the reasons I got a lot of faith in Freddie is because he, Freddie Basseur, is because he has a good feel for who are the good people to have in race teams, and he's surrounding himself with good people. And a good example is a long-term deal with Jock Clear, because he knows Charles feels comfortable with Jock in the garage and bounces ideas off Jock all the time, and Jock gives him lots of input, and Jock is now running the Formula One Academy for Ferrari as well, and it's a very healthy thing, and... And he put Jock on a long-term contract. And, you know, that says a lot about Freddie Vasseur and, and how good Ferrari is starting to be, I think. That's why I say I think they'll be closer to Red Bull and I think they'll do a pretty good job this year. Uh, Justin Grant says Mick is going to do prototype cars this year. Yeah, I know. It's a shame, isn't it? Um, Gameborg says, coming back to Gameborg, who started this whole show, I, I did not think of booting George, but that could happen. And if Albon does not go to Red Bull, ironic twist, Albon switching seats with George. Yeah, well, they're good mates, aren't they? And we, we like to think, or I like to think, that that it was George Russell that got Albon in at Williams, his mate, uh, through, the, through the sort of Mercedes engine thing. And, uh, yeah, they're, you know, imagine George, if Albon ends up at Red Bull again, blowing George away in a Mercedes. That's going to be funny, isn't it? Um, Aaron Taylor says I assume it will be Mick since Toto was so convinced everyone else should sign him <laughs> I don't know if you're being facetious there or what but yeah you know careful what you wish for Toto because you've been telling us how good Mick is I think he is good and I happen to agree with you but um, I'm sure a lot of people out there are not putting him on their shortlist not that their shortlist is important of course um, so Lando had to cash in before Oscar devalues him Topsy. Well, you put it absolutely in a nutshell there, possibly Topsy. I mean, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt saying, well, he's probably thought it through and thinks that if he does this long term deal, it might dumb down Oscar a bit. But no, um, Oscar's not going to go away. That's right. And I and I'm it's another reason for Lando thought to have thought, yeah, I need to get out of here and into a Red Bull or a Merc or something, because whatever I've got is going to be, you know, whoever I've got is going to be as good as Oscar but isn't going to be any better than Oscar and you know at least I'll be in different different scenery and I'll be in a team which is historically winning races so I'm surprised he signed so early at for McLaren um so there you go um so a bit of chat all amongst everybody uh here Lando doesn't want to challenge himself yeah possibly possibly doesn't want to be in that position but He's got Oscar there, you know. I don't know. You know, it just seems odd. Wow. I mean, I, I'm thinking everybody in the world thinks Lando Norris is the greatest racing driver since, I don't know what, Tatsio Nubilari. And here's Nubia saying, Lando is just here for the cash. He'll retire for a life on Twitch after McLaren. <laughs> That's a bit sad to hear, isn't it? I thought everybody would be saying, oh, this guy should be in a Ferrari or this guy should be in a Mercedes. Well, I think he should. Um, so let's have a look at this one Hugo Ferreira do you think a situation like Button BAR Williams 
could happen at the end of 24 if Mercedes has an awesome 24 and Ferrari has a miserable 24 Hamilton could forget the money get out of well I was thinking about that because I did say I did an interview last night actually just before the news broke that he'd gone to Ferrari but we knew we knew he was going to leave Mercedes and I was saying you know he could go to Ferrari but if I was but Lewis is more likely to keep his options open because if Mercedes do have a mega car in 24 and looks like they're going to win a championship in 25 why would he want to leave Mercedes and then two minutes later came the news that he signed for Ferrari. So, um, yeah, and you're right. In order then to do anything about that, you'd have because Button, if you, for those who don't remember, Button signed a Williams contract when he was after he won that race in Hungary, I think, wasn't it? And then decided he didn't want to do it and went back to BAR again. And I guess had to pay Frank a bit of money. Nigel did the same thing actually in '86 when he started to win Grand Prix on a fairly regular basis against Piquet. He signed a Ferrari option to go to Ferrari in 87 and then Honda persuaded him to stay by giving Frank more money to pay Nigel and telling Nigel how good the engine was going to be blah 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 and Nigel suddenly thought okay I think I'll stay at Williams now and then he had to pay a lot of money to Ferrari to get out of that so as I say contracts are made to be broken to some extent and and it would be an interesting situation would it not if Lewis actually won the championship as I said earlier in the live feed because how would Mercedes then handle a guy who's won these eighth world championship in a Mercedes and he's out there racing for Ferrari and they can't use his name or fame at all imagine that Uh, Bear Thomas says, I love McLaren, but Lando made a mistake. Well, there you go. I think Lando is not uber ambitious. It's funny, isn't it? All these people saying that. And yet sort of watching the Lando sort of, um, you know, sort of phenomenon from afar, the whole social media phenomenon from afar, I, get, I, I was under the impression that he was everybody's favourite driver in terms of, winning nine world championships in the next 10 years or whatever I, you know i'm exaggerating obviously but isn't he the sort of taylor swift of motorsport of formula one I, that's what i imagined he was but maybe he's not um guy guy do you remember monza when lewis won he told the tofosi crowd mercedes power is more power than ferrari yeah well i wonder if they'll remind him of that i think you know lewis I'm sure he owns a Ferrari, doesn't he? I'm sure somebody out there knows exactly what road cars Lewis has got. I'm sure he just loves the whole Ferrari logo. I'm driving for Ferrari kid thing, doesn't he? He's just a kid, Lewis. Great kid. Yeah, very fast racing driver too. Um, okay, here's Darth Snarf kind of coming back to tell me that Lando's okay. He said, I don't think it's that bad of a move. McLaren will be a good team if they keep their trajectory. Yeah, exactly my point. A good team. But a championship winning great team, that's my point. You say, if you're Lando, you've got more chance of winning a Grand Prix if you're in the second Red Bull. And, and I think it's fair to say in, the, in a Mercedes over the next, if he signed a four-year deal with them over the next four years, then you would if you stayed at McLaren. Maybe not. But then again, you know, he's got Oscar there as well. So that's not easy. And I think Oscar must be thinking. That's another point, isn't it? Oscar... Oscar must be thinking, I'm really, I'm so lucky to be at McLaren and having Lando there because I'm pretty sure I can race with him and be quick and it's a great team. But then sometimes he must be thinking, ah, I could be in a Ferrari, I could do that job. I could be in a Mercedes, I'm quicker than George Russell. Well, he's probably thinking that and he's, you know, wonder what he's thinking about his future. Um... Ah, do we know whether Lando has a get-out clause as Lewis? Well, he's managed by Zach Brown, so I'd be very surprised if he has. Um, you know, Zach is the one of the sharpest guys I know on the planet, so I'd be surprised. I think the get-out clause at Mercedes was the you know Lewis insisted on it, and and equally Toto insisted on it because he was a bit like the Alpine Fernando thing they weren't exactly sure what Lewis is going to be like in the next couple of years so yeah let's okay let's have a get out clause sort of Ralph Schumacher Frank Williams style um, we're not really sure if we really want to be with one another so we'll have lots of get out clauses oh I want to keep Ralph now I'm gonna to have to pay him 20 million instead of 1 million um, anyway those were the days Merck should take Oscar says Naimor well they would 
But they have to take him, steal him, I think. You'd find, wouldn't they? I can't imagine Zach hasn't got him tied up for the next 4,000 years. Um, and what's this? NJO, NJO says, I think McLaren Ferrari closer to catching Red Bull and Mercedes. Yeah, I've, McLaren and Mercedes, I think. I mean, it'd be interesting to see who scores the most points at the end of 24, won't it? Keep using this word interesting. Um I think it's I think it's quite I'm, I listen to a podcast um, a very funny New Yorker girl who keeps saying yeah well that's interesting and, and I think well it's got to be a trendy word now amongst the cool people so I'm allowed to say it again <laughs> so I keep saying interesting not quite sure what it means really but um, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how the McLaren Mercedes thing does go this year Nubia Lando does have a brain he thinks you can win a wet race on soft tires yeah, Irene. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think just on that point, it's um, it's interesting, isn't it? With the wet racing that we have these days, if it's super wet, they always delay the start. So it's always we very rarely have wet races, and then it's intermediates, and usually, it's when the intermediates are hard, so hard that you can run them for long enough to get rid of all the grooves, that um, not the grooves, but you just wear them down till they become slicks. Yeah, the grooves. And um, and then they're really quick. Didn't Lance Stroll? Lance Stroll found that when when he was... He nearly won that Turkish Grand Prix. It's hard to believe, isn't it? But he did. Um, going back to the top now, because I've had to refresh and blah, blah, blah. It's... Um, tuna. Is Bonotto still at Ferrari? No. No, he's not. Oh, it's a good question. Maybe he is still at Ferrari. I, I don't know. I, I thought he left. Did he? Would Lewis have wanted to move there? If, uh, but yeah, he did leave. Bonotto was still at Ferrari. Would Lewis have wanted to move there? I think Fred Vasseur is 110% of the reason why Lewis... No. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think there's any way in the world Bonotto would have even asked Lewis to go there, would he? He's, he's, he, loves, he loved Carlos Sainz, so that would have been it. Um, so he wouldn't have gone. It wouldn't even have been a question whether Lewis wanted to go there. It wouldn't have even been on the table anyway. Uh, do I see anybody winning over Red Bull and Max this year? Mm, not really, no. Uh, the only thing, as I say, I think, I think Ferrari might win more than one race. And I think it'll be because they're in a position to put a little bit more pressure on Red Bull, possibly into making the odd mistake or two. But I think for the championship as a whole, hard to see how Max isn't going to win it again. Um, Rayon says, I don't know any athlete earning $100 million a year right now. No, I don't either. I don't know anybody only. I don't know anybody only who owns over $100 million, earns over $100 million on anything. Um, Sean Bookman. Why isn't that coming up? It says, there we go. I see the usual blurb that Merck puts out. <laughs> but honestly, I think they got something right right now. I just, I talk just speculating. Merck is hot. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. It's all good that people are talking about it, aren't they? It wasn't, wasn't long ago um, that everyone was saying how boring it was. There were no changes going on and nothing was happening. And we've since had Andretti being rejected. We've got, the Madrid Grand Prix. We've got Lewis going to Ferrari. Anything else that we want? Um, Lewis Leclerc's salary goes up each year, up to fifty million. I read. Well, as my understanding is, he's um, Nicholas Todd managing him. He is on exactly the same retainer as Lewis Hamilton, identical. And I think it's as I keep saying, I think it's north of sixty, and I conservatively seventy. It might be eighty, you know. But he's on big money, definitely. Good for good for Charles. Deserves it. DCO 101 says Lewis to Ferrari is a romantic commercial move unlikely that he's going to be a real success there well I'm if he did <laughs> if Carlos Sainz is in the other car you could say I think he would be a big success there I mean because you've got Charles there Charles could be the guy but I think if the car's good enough to win a championship it's going to be close between those two I said my money would be on Charles but um it would be close very close so Death Snarf says it's Formula Dollar Euro Pounds now, not Formula One. 
Lee Woods, looking at his legacy, will Hamilton's success at Ferrari solidify his claim as the greatest Formula One driver? Or will his performance there be judged differently due to the different challenges presented? Well, I'm not splitting hairs here, but I don't think Lewis has ever claimed anything about being great or not great. He just goes out and does his job and drives the best job. He does the best job he can on any given day. We are the ones, the observers from the outside, who love to talk about how good is he and how good is that. And from my perspective, I would never compare Lewis with Jim Clark or Tatio Nubilari or uh, Rudy Caracciola or Sterling Moss or Juan Manuel Fangio because they're completely different eras. It's apples and oranges, so you can't compare them. What I would say is that in this era, he's for a long time, he was the best guy out there. And I think right now he's bracketed in the top three with Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc. Um, I don't think going to Ferrari changes the way you think about him at all, because in fact, you could say he's got great spirit because he's there at the back end of his career. He's won seven championships. He's got all the money he wants in the world. And yet he still wants to give himself this new challenge, this new environment to go out there and see what happens. He's got no idea how it's going to go, really, has he? Any more than he has any idea how the Mercedes is going to go this year. But he's doing it just to get a breath of fresh air and do something different. And I all credit to him for that, I think. All credit. Um, so I'm going back to the top again. It keeps, because there are so many questions, it keeps telling me to go back to the top, um, which I'm doing. Thank you. Ryan Ramatour. It's 15 years since Ferrari won. Can't see them coming back. Really? Oh, you could say, well, 15 years, about time they did come back, isn't it? That's about like this. What was it, you know, from between um, Nicky's last win, which was what, 77, then Jody 79, and then the next one was Michael in yeah that was a long one so you know you're looking at around 79 to uh 2000 no sorry to yeah 2000 so 79, 80 so it's 21 years so it's only 15 yeah you, pff, got a long way to go yet <laughs> no i think i think there's every reason they can come back they've got good people um you know they've got two amazing racing drivers they're getting good, better people all the time and and they've got good management at the top Freddie Vasseur should there be no limit says Jay Marvin to the number of teams in Formula One well I you know I, I, I remember the era when they used to have pre-qualifying and we'd have you know 28 places 28 cars for 26 places or you know you'd have 14 teams out there and yeah I think the more I think I'd love to see the some of these really good Formula 2 teams being given an opportunity if they can get the wherewithal to become all the things you need to be for Formula 1 design and build your own car get a Dallara like Haas <laughs> um, I mean this is just another point you know they've rejected Michael Andretti who basically wants to do his own car with his own engine bringing in the Andretti name and lots of new stuff into Formula 1 sponsors engine everything and yet they accepted Haas as an American entrant in Formula One, car built by Dallara, not even an American car. And I'm not decrying Haas because he took advantage of that situation and he's still taking advantage of that situation. I'm just saying that if you accept that, how can you reject Michael Andretti? It just doesn't make any sense at all in the context of, of Haas having Dallara build their car for them. And there should be a limit, obviously, because the tracks and the, the circuits and the pits and the paddock and everything else is not an infinite thing. But um, certainly it's, uh, it's ludicrous now to say 10 teams uh, is enough. We, don't, we can't have any more just because the teams don't want to give away a little bit of their money. It's pathetic in my view. It's completely wrong. Um, so Chris says best thing to happen in Formula 1 go go greatest of all time referring I think to Lewis Hamilton I wonder if and Andrew Ellis says I wonder if Max is looking at Lewis and thinking about joining Ferrari in the future his confidence must be at the level of that he fancies giving it a go to nah I mean if if Red Bull changes in a major way by which I mean Red Bull as a sponsor pull out as an owner and sell everything and Adrian Newey decides to go properly into retirement, yes, then Max would look over his shoulder and see what's out there. But so long as he's having fun at Red Bull with all these great people and the sponsor of the team, the owner of the team and Christian and all the people there, why would he leave that? You know, it's just like 
it's every racing driver's dream i think to do to have what he's got jason francis what's happening with adrian newey well I'm just i'm just mentioning adrian i don't think anything's happening with adrian apart from he's probably in cape town at the moment is he not isn't that where he goes over the winter he's probably doing the odd zoom call about airflow and deflectors and pressures center of pressures and but I suspect he's having a bit of fun and doing what he always does. Just doing a great job as ever. I think. I don't think he's, I haven't heard that he's retiring or doing anything differently. Um, so, yeah. Um, Chiba says Lewis is doing the opposite of Michael. Yep, that's right. He is the other way around. But nonetheless, back into the career, they both sort of did something different, didn't they? And it didn't really work for Michael. Let's hope it works for Lewis. Gilles was a very passionate pilot. He was indeed. Thank you very much, KM. Um, lovely guy too. Very good friend. Oh, Peter Carroll Krauss says Adrian's designing a Red Bull hypercar. Yeah, he does that in the bath or something, doesn't he? Just sort of five minutes a day. I don't think it um, takes too much of his brain power these days. Um, yeah, Jason Francis talking about Michael now. Pulled some dirty moves against Hill Vilner, Barrichello. Yeah, well, you know. I think Michael did, but he was a tough. Atten Senna did too. You know, you can't just say it was all Michael doing those things in those ages, in those days. Um, Martin Lee says, "Why are you hard? Not hard to spot drivers when they're nine or 12. Well, that's very kind of you to say so. Um, partly because I think all the spotters they want are the guys spotting the size of motorhomes, aren't they? They're not that interested in how quick the drivers are, the nine and 12 year olds. They're always looking at who's got the richest dads. <gasps> Should I be saying that? Uh, I think that's the case though. I don't think you could tell too much in karting. I don't think I'd be very good at karting uh, IDing. I think for, I'm gonna start going to some Formula Four races and tests here in Spain this year because it's quite a big championship, isn't it? There's some good people in it. Nathan Ty, for example, young British driver who I have met, kart, kart racer. I met him doing the Formula One exhibition. I interviewed him because we want to follow the progress of a young British carter and just see how it goes. And he's got very good management behind him, managed by Guillaume, who manages Pierre Gasly and so forth. And um, so we're following Nathan Ty, and he's racing Formula Spanish Formula Four this year with Campos so it's a good championship and I'm going to go to a few races and see what's going on but um, yeah I try and keep in touch with who's good and who's not well not 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 who's not but I try to keep in touch with who's good and what's going on and 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 I keep saying don't underestimate Frederick Vesti this guy definitely has it in terms of technique and talent and uh, natural talent uh, yes of course personality different from a lot of drivers but good I think he's good I'm not saying he should be in the Mercedes straight away but I just he's a guy that his name should be out there and definitely should be talked about uh Tuna says there'll be no more hammer time I wonder what um Italian for hammer time is I'm sure they'll come up with something I mean when Nigel went to Ferrari it was suddenly Il Leone which he never was in England he's never called the lion in England and uh, but he was Il Leone and Nigel started wearing the cloth check cap, didn't he? Graham Hill style, and they loved it all. I wonder if Lewis will do that. I wonder if he'll put on a, a deer stalker or something and, um, and smoke a Sherlock Holmes pipe with no tobacco in it just to sort of be very British monocle or something. And uh, uh, it'll be fun. The Italians will love him. They will. They'll absolutely love him. They love Charles too, you know. What a thing. Just imagine, I'm only daydreaming now. It's a 2025 italian grand prix at monza and they've just finished one two and charles won the last three races but this is lewis's first win and he wins the italian grand prix at monza imagine as they walk out on that sort of thing that bridge thing to the podium the crowd wow oh well, tears in my eyes um so <laughs> they are so cruel some of you this is Xenix. I bet Horner would have paid big money to have seen Toto's face when he heard the news over breakfast, you know, eating his croissant and drinking his coffee. Yeah. I think you're right. He would have. So, yeah. Break the news over breakfast. 
Steve R says, Charles will have the edge in qualifying, but if anyone thinks he will have the pace over Lewis on race, he is delusional. Okay, well, we'll hold you to that one, Steve R. We'll come back to you in, in uh, 18 months' time and see if you're right about that. I personally think that Charles is very good on tyre management and, and race driving. I think he's suffered quite a lot recently due to all the strategy rubbish going on. But I think that'll all be sorted by the time they're racing together. And I think Charles will be just the equal of Lewis in race conditions. That's my opinion. But Lewis, I'm not in any way. I mean, one one area, what's, is, Charles, is Charles good in, Charles quite good in first corners as well. You know, he's not bad, as is Lewis. Obviously. I mean, Lewis is great in first corners and he's great in staying out of trouble, probably better than Charles ever will be at staying out of trouble but that's not the only thing of course um, and the best way to stay out of trouble is to be on the front row anyway um, so Shav is starting to explain I personally don't buy the Lando hype I think he's not in the same league as Max Charles or even Russell I think when he's truly tested he'll buckle under pressure well there you go well why why is there so much hype about him then is it the whole um I don't know what it is. Is it just the, the online media thing? I mean, I, I've always thought he was very good, Lando, and I've always been a bit annoyed that he's never worked harder on making his corners a bit shorter. I know a lot of people find it irritating when I say that, but I, I can't say it any other way because I think it's true and I think he could do it. I think he has the talent to be able to do that. But when I see him taking longer corners and using more road than a Lewis, I just think, what a waste, really. A bit like, a bit like Carlos. Um, so Big Feathers Farm I think it is strange that Lewis signs now before the season without knowing Ferrari or Mercedes in 24 Toto was surprised is there something else going on we are missing here in this story no I think Lewis just as I said I think Lewis once he'd made the decision to go to Ferrari it was a question of obviously when there was, there was a date on which he had to this option had to be taken up or not for 25. So maybe it was that, I don't know, but probably not. Maybe it was long before. Let's assume that date wasn't until September. Why would Lewis do it now? I think, as I said before, I think it's because he's made his mind up to go to Ferrari, come what may, in his mind. He, it, the odds of Mercedes having a brilliant car, better car than Ferrari this year, he probably thinks are quite small. If, if anything, they're going to be about the same. So he's going to Ferrari, and then he thinks... You know, I'm just going to enjoy this year because I'm going to Ferrari and I'm just going to turn up, race, go away. And it wouldn't be right for me to be sitting there getting all this information for 25 and then suddenly deciding to leave halfway through or three quarters of the way through the year. Be very, I'd be very uncomfortable doing that. And I know Toto well enough to know that he'll respect that. And what I'm going to do is announce it now because I'm just going to race. I'm just going to turn up and race. I know they're not going to give me much information. I know I'm not going to be sitting in on all the debriefs in the way I used to and going to the, 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 the factory for the sim and everything else. I'm just going to breathe freely and enjoy myself and, and go racing and forget about all that stuff in the past. I don't really care win, lose or draw. I'm going to enjoy my racing and do the best job I can. I think that's why he's done it simple as that he's a simple he's a racer and and he would want that situation i may be wrong but that's my opinion um mercedes should have paid off lewis's contract and put a new driver in this year well they might still do that in which case lewis will just you know go on holiday and relax and be ready for his ferrari thing i just you know it's a difficult one from mercedes point of view isn't it because in a way that is the right thing to do because imagine if Whatever success Lewis has this year, they can't really capitalize on it anymore in terms of advertising and promotion and doing stuff with sponsors. It's going to be difficult because they're all going to be saying to Lewis, oh, why are you leaving and going to Ferrari and all that? It's going to dominate everything in a way that is uncomfortable for everybody. And it, it wouldn't, you know, it's not, if it's a terrible car, the Mercedes, and Lewis is, you know, they're even worse than they are no normally, they might do that. Yeah, they might say, OK, we're going to put. But to do that, they've got to have a driver who is available, haven't they? And, and that's the next thing. The driver they're going to replace Lewis with may not be available to the end of the year. Almost certainly won't be available if it's an Alonso or if it's a, um, 
well, it wouldn't. Well, obviously, in that case, it would not, not in a million years be um, Kimi Antonelli's. It wouldn't be him. Um, so, yeah, what they can't really not run him. Who else would they put in the car? I suppose Mick would be the only one they could do that with. A little bit in the way McLaren did when they got rid of Juan Pablo Montoya and they ran Pedro de la Rosa and a couple of others um, before Lewis. And, you know, it's a difficult time, difficult thing. It's a good point, though. You know, I hadn't thought about that. Maybe they will pay him off. What are the odds Toto will know all the Ferrari secrets at the end of the 25 season? Well, you're saying that Lewis is closer to Toto than he is to Freddy Vasseur? Mm, I don't think so. I think after Abu Dhabi 21, I can't imagine the relationship between Lewis and Toto was as close as it was prior to Abu Dhabi 21. Yes, I'm sure they hung out and I'm sure there was a lot of the usual stuff, but it was never the same, in my opinion. George Howard says Lando's a nice guy. Well, he is, absolutely. Um, not sure that that helps him when he's driving his racing car, but he is a very nice guy. He's a good guy. Well, he's actually not, he's not that, you know, he's not just a nice guy either. He's a tough, tough racer, Lando. A tough racer. I've been thinking for a long time who he reminds me of. Um, and I still haven't managed to come to the conclusion of who he reminds me of. But it's somebody, I mean, I think he's, he's a bit like Stefan Beloff um, in the way he, he's got a very nice sort of smiley, nice exterior in a in, most of the time, not all the time, um, but he's he's hard as nails underneath. Real racer, and and I always felt that about Stefan. Um, Rehan at Eduardo Castro. Then Ferrari will get Hamilton into their car this year. Yeah, but that's not going to happen, is it? There's no way. There's no way. I don't think mid-season they would pay off Lewis, and he would go to Ferrari, and then Ferrari would sack say science hasn't got it right they just sack Carlos Sainz I just don't think they would do that yeah Irwin says Lando's in a very good place at McLaren second half of 23 McLaren made huge steps well that's right I'm not saying they're not and I think they'll be very near Mercedes all I'm saying is long term for Lando Norris I think he still would have been better off in a Mercedes or a or a Red Bull that's all and uh and he's dialed himself out of both those options now that's all I'm not saying McLaren won't come back and won't win a Grand Prix again fairly soon and maybe two or three Grand Prix but I'm still not sure that they're going to win a championship against Red Bull Ferrari and Mercedes will Mercedes favor Russell in 23 asks cross CW yeah I think they will favor in the sense that he will be um, everyone will be wanting him to go well, particularly Toto, because this is building for 25 when he is potentially going to be leading the team. And they want him to be confident, to understand the car, the, everything in an even better way than he does already. And But they, they won't be giving him bits that make him quicker than Lewis. Though. Everything will be equal in that sense. It'll just be behind the scenes stuff, meetings, information, pushing, encouragement, all that. You know, and a lot of people, a lot of stuff that Lewis won't get now. Um, so Larry Varner says, Lewis still at Mercedes is going to be a huge distraction for them. Yeah. Whereas MVD thinks George Russell scared Lewis off. <laughs> I don't think he's scared. He never showed. I mean, he never looked once as if he was scared, I thought, when he was in traffic, wheel to wheel with aggressive racing drivers like George or K-Mag or Sonoda and those guys. He always looked to be their equal, I thought, and drove extremely well in an environment that he was very unused to because he hadn't been in that environment for a long, long time. Um, Bobby of Earth says, I can hardly wait to see how the 24 cars line up. Don't care who beats Red Bull, just want to see them lose. Ah, <laughs> oh, why? Why is everybody down on Red Bull now? 
just because they're winning everything. I mean, when Tiger Woods was winning all those golf tournaments, nobody said, oh, I want to see Tiger Woods get beaten. They all thought, wow, isn't this great? Golf's never been better. And yet now, Red Bull doing the same thing. Everybody wants to see him get beaten. Um, TVM says, Mercedes team has time to recover competitive edge while Ma Hamilton's time as a competitive driver is limited. Kudos to Hamilton's decision to remove to move while remaining competitive. Yep, I agree with 100%. Um, Lewis Hamilton fans already conceding Saturday's. Mm, quite sure what's the rest of the sentence there. Saturday's what? Oh, conceding Saturday's. You mean Charles always going to be quicker in qualifying and George? Is that what you mean? Um, Unless it's a sprint weekend, in which case qualifying is on a Friday, I think, is it not? Uh, <laughs> Serge, interesting whether Vettel is going to make a return to Formula One. Yeah, is it? Mm, I suppose so. Um, I can't imagine with whom and how, but anyway. Uh, he, I mean, he didn't look that good alongside um, Lance Stroll, did he? Was, <laughs> bearing in mind how Fernando's whipped Lance's, whatever. Um, you know, Sebastian, heavy weather, really. So I can't imagine he'd want to come back. He's having a good, he's enjoying his life now, isn't he? Lots of classic cars and lots of good stuff he's doing, you know, saving lots of things, which is good. I'm not in any way knocking that. I'm really, really impressed. Um, so Dennis Melvin says, Taylor Swift is better looking, I think, than I said Lando Norris. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that, actually. He's probably a better singer, too, I should think. Mind you, I think Lando's a better golfer, I would think. I don't know. Taylor Swift may be a mega golfer, so who knows? Um, Pine XD, the issue with all of these young drivers out aside of Oscar so far is that they lack the mental fortitude to win. Do they? These young drivers. What, what, what young drivers are we talking about? George. Well, George has got the mental fortitude. He has one. And, uh, and, he, and he won very well, actually, didn't he, in Brazil? So, yeah, I give George his credit, you know. He does have the mental fortitude. George has won a lot of races. If you add up all these wins in his career, he knows how to win races, I think. Um, so casual fan says, I think Shoei Otani, the baseball player, is the top earning athlete. Yep. Hiteshi Arora says, Lewis is like Perez in Red Bull. You think he's going to be blown away to that extent by Charles? I'm a Charles fan. I'm a Lewis fan too, so I've got two of my guys in the same team. But I can't imagine that it's going to be like that. Anyway, could Mercedes put Lewis on gardening leave this year? It's a very interesting question. We've just talked about that. Yeah, could they pay him off not to race? I mean, so much money <laughs> for a guy not to race. I can't imagine that they would do that, would they? I mean, if Lewis is fulfilling the letter of his contract, which obviously he is, to write off, well, let's, let's call it 60, um, and then you've got to pay somebody else to come in, it's got to be somebody better than the job Lewis would do, even though he's leaving. And it's got to be a guy that you're going to run next year because you want to, well, for, for at least two or three years, because you want him to be involved in all the meetings and stuff and have all the information. So who would that be? You know, if they want Alonso, they've got to wait till the end of the year for sure. Um, Lando's off the page. Um, so it's got to be a youngish guy, unless it's Daniel Ricciardo, maybe. Maybe Daniel. That's about the only one I can think of that they could possibly do a deal with Red Bull and you put Liam Lawson in the Alpha, what's it called? The um, Visa Cash App RB. Um, then you run Daniel and then you commit to Daniel for two or three years on the basis that it's, you know, it's the best they could get at this moment if they don't want Lewis. But the, they didn't want to sign Lewis for more than a year with an option. So why would they want to commit long term to Daniel? I mean, he's not a spring chicken, is he? So, yeah, it's, um, it's a funny situation. It's a very funny situation. And I, I don't, I think just talking it through like that, I can't imagine they would do that, would they? I think 12 teams should be the limit, says Peter Carroll Krauss. I think you're probably right. Let me just look at my notes, see if there's anything else I wanted to say about this. Lewis also back with Mark Hines uh, as his PA stroke I wouldn't say manager, but definitely a good guy who used to race, understands racing. I don't know who he's been with in the last few years, but when he was really racing, doing a great job, Mark Hines was 
alongside Lewis, and I'm pleased that's um, happening. Alpine failed a crash test in the last week or so. That's not good news, is it? You, we just assume that they all pass these crash testers, but, tests, but um, Alpine lost a few good people, failing a crash test. Wonder how they're going to go. Um, Max, yeah, done all that. Okay, yeah, all the other points I wanted to make, I think I made. Um, let's have a look. F cranky Boolean. Be interesting at Mercedes and Ferrari in 24, given both Lewis and Science will be leaving at the end of it. Yeah, now, I'm glad you've used the interesting word as well, because um, it is <laughs> it's the best way to describe it. Um, Madeleine Popper, even though I've just said that Alpine have failed their crash test most recently and they've lost quite a few people, says Max Verstappen, nonetheless, could win the title in an Alpine. He's that good. Mm. I wonder what Max would say about that. Do my thing where you have this uh, auction for who's going to drive for which team on the Thursday before every race. He would be in an Alpine at some point, wouldn't he? That'd be good. Gogol, I hope the seat in the Ferrari is placed to the back of the car far enough. Well, this is all, yeah, is Lewis not that happy about the driving position? I'm sure he'll be very comfortable in the Ferrari. Um... Uh, going back to the top of all the things. Mercedes will, be, Mercedes will be faster than Ferrari, thinks MVD this year. Wow, okay, good. You've got a lot of faith in them. Uh, Mark Warren says you need Alonso at Mercedes in 25. Hamilton, Alonso at Ferrari. Fireworks. Um, that says HR. Yeah, that would be fireworks. I think... Um, you know, again, as just to make the point, would Mercedes sign a, the long-term deal that that Fernando would presumably want? But having said that, if Mercedes rang up Fernando and said, "Look, we can't offer you. Uh, we're only going to offer you a one-year deal uh, with an option on our side for two years, but you've got the Ferra the Mercedes race seat alongside George Russell if you want it, Fernando, for one year, um, hopefully two. Do you want it or not? I think Fernando would probably take it actually." Uh, depends how he goes in, in the Aston Martin. I mean, the Aston Martin, we, nobody's talking about Aston. They may be up there with Mercedes this year. Who knows? Maybe better than Mercedes. I don't see, so this is a D DCO 101. I don't see it as a bold move for Hamilton to go to Ferrari. It's a free roll for a whole lot of cash. His reputation isn't on the line because George already took that. He Le Leclerc probably sends him into retirement, but so what? So I assume from that you're a massive Lewis Hamilton fan. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a lot of chat going on, chatting amongst yourselves. Uh, so awkward Leon, my mention of Cape Town and Adrian Newey has come up with the flag so thank you very much yeah good stuff um rick mars imagine if ferrari can sign adrian newey if he left if he was let go by red bull oh well i mean that brings me back to my other point which i've made i don't know about 20 times but i'll say it again if ferrari forget all this lewis hamilton stuff if ferrari had spent one billion one billion euros to buy Adrian Newey from Red Bull and pay him to be their technical director five years ago, I think by now Ferrari probably would have won three world championships and got all that money back and more. But they didn't. Just shows how important that is. And that, that's just to really um, just to highlight that. And I think Adrian would have taken it because it was ridiculous money. But they didn't. And they never really thought it through correctly. And they did what they did. And that was that big mistake. Um, so, yeah, and I feel sure about it. I think they would have won three world championships by now if they signed Adrian five years ago. Absolutely. They would have had the car that he did for Red Bull. Um, Wolf 91. I'm not sure I understand this one. Madeline getting spanked by Ricardo at the age when Lewis was fighting for championships. Who's Madeline? Is that... I, I presume the only one who was the only person Ricardo Spank was Vettel, was it? Is that what you mean? Uh, let's not forget he had already been in Formula One three years too to make matters worse. Anyway, I'm not quite sure I understand that. I know it's a good point, but I'm just being a bit stupid here. Sorry. Um, Peter Carroll Krauss, 
there is a recent Oracle Red Bull video where Adrian is being interviewed about the Red Bull hypercar. Yeah, yeah. He does all these things. Hypercars, yachts, whatever. New kennel for his dog, I'm sure. He's, he's a designer. That's what he does. But he also makes sure the Red Bull is a quick racing car. We've got a lovely 10. Uh, Lee Woods here. Thank you very much, Lee, uh, for your super chat. Will Ferrari's historically different car development philosophy and culture mesh well with Hamilton's racing style and preferences honed at Mercedes? And how might that impact his performance? Well, I don't think there is going to be a big difference in culture because a lot of the people at Ferrari doing well now um, are all people that Freddy Vasseur has been hiring. Uh, the, a lot of Italians there, for sure. But equally, um, as I just said, you know, like uh sarah is there ex mercedes performance engineer who lewis knows really well joined last december for example jock clear another good example so lots of good people at ferrari and i don't think the philosophy will be that different obviously they do their own engine the same way that mercedes did but it's a little bit you know closer um and hamilton's racing style and preferences will be no different from any teams really you know he's he wants a quick car. He doesn't want slow speed understeer. He wants a nice big sweet spot that he can work around in terms of balance for tire deg and uh, trimming the car to get the car right on in top speed. And Ferrari, we know, pretty good on high speed braking already. So that Lewis will be very comfortable on that. And I think Ferrari are only going to capitalize on that and just try to get a car that's better circuit to circuit to circuit and not so changeable in the way the Mercedes was so I think he'll he'll love it all and I think he'll I think if there's a lot of difference in the way they operate in terms of meetings scheduling of meetings travel arrangements how they go about it where they want the meetings to take place punctuality all those things he will love it all because he wants he wants this shock change because he's you know he's fed up with everything that happened the last three years I think have drained him and he wants this change and that's why he's done it and I think it's a great thing. And I think he'll embrace it in every way. He'll love it. That's my thing. But thanks for that question, Lee. Very kind. Um, I was a fan of Freddie Vasseur's art team, GP2. Yeah, I think that's what you mean. Hammer Dam. Hammer Tremp. Hammer Tiemp. Okay, it's Italian. El Hammer Tiemp. Tiempo. Yeah, good point. Yeah, that's what it'll be. Uh, you know, Italy's a great country and lots of cool things that Lewis is going to love about Italy. Least of all, the, most of all the food, I would imagine, the pasta. Um, uh, Madeline, Madeline Popper says, Max would easily win the title in a Mercedes, a good car, but Mercedes has mediocre drivers. Well, I don't agree with that. Um, so this is interesting question. Jos3770, are you able to upload the full YouTube stream audio to the podcast feed? I am, but I tend to edit it because <laughs> this is, sounds really nickel and dime, doesn't it? But the, the deal I've got with the podcast RSS platform that I use to put it out on on uh, Amazon Music or Google Podcasts or um, Spotify, there's a limited amount of time I have per month. And so I try to put the podcast down, I try to make it lim limit it down to about 45 minutes. Are you saying that's a bad thing? I think it's probably quite, I've always thought it's quite a good thing because I think I, I ramble on a bit too much and I try to cut it back, but that's probably what people want. But there's absolutely no reason why I couldn't put the whole stream on. But look at this. We've been going since uh, my time. We've been going since 7.30. It's almost 10 o'clock now. And that's a lot to put out. Are people really going to listen to two and a half hours of this? I hope. Yeah. Norris is still a teenager, says Hitoshi Aurora. McGregor to Mercedes, HR. Yeah, Wolf, Spank Barricado, Double. I'm quite sure what that is. Um, oh, is he a Ricardo Wolf, Ricardo Double? I don't know. Um, J Marvin, will Roden get Jamie a Formula One seat for 25? Jamie Chadwick for Mercedes alongside Russell. <laughs> yeah, come on, let's get serious. Um, I'm nothing against lady racing drivers, female racing drivers, all for it. Brilliant. And there's no reason why we shouldn't have more um, Tatiana Calderons or um, 
or Maria Therese de Filippis or Lella Lombardi's. Um, let's hope it comes along. Um, Ge Jeff Goldblum says he knows next year is lost anyway. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, but then there's no guarantee Ferrari going to be better than Mercedes. So it's it's more than just which is going to be the best car. I think it's more than that in this case with Lewis, as I've said. Kiwan Stardom. Fred hinted at Adrian joining Ferrari as well. Is that possible? Well, I'm sure he would like Adrian. And he's probably thinking Peter Windsor was right. We should have signed Adrian five years ago for one billion euros. I should have got Peter to do the deal. That's what he should be thinking anyway. In the same way, when I went up to Marco, when they were still faffing around with Renault engines, when they weren't going anywhere, sent and told them two years before they switched to Honda that they should switch to Honda and get into bed with Honda early and make that engine a winner very quickly because McLaren are going nowhere with it. And Marco said, get out of my office. Ludicrous suggestion. We'll never go back to Honda or with Honda. So, you know, these people never listen, do they? They never listen. Russell is World Driver Championship material, says Wolf91, something that Max will never get paired with. Horner is terrified of him, putting Perez, putting Max with a good teammate. So, so there we go. That's not going to happen, apparently. Um, Frankie Bullion says, uh, nice explanation from Peter Windsor, breaking the news now to give Mercedes plenty of time to get another driver and to without sensitive development info from him. Quite sure what that means. Probably being critical, I think. I don't really understand it. Maybe my, maybe I've been doing this long enough tonight. <laughs> I'm not laughing quite as much as I should. Especially if... Um, oh, hang on. There's a super chat there. Let's have a look at this one. Um, oh, we've done that one. That's good. Thank you. Uh, there's another one. Um, okay. This is from Quick Scott D. Thank you very much. Peter, many sports enact trades, tirades of athletes. Why wouldn't this be possible in Formula One? Oh, enact trades of athletes. What does that mean? Oh, they have trades of drivers. Well, that's what isn't that what the 82 driver strike in South Africa was all about? That the new super license gave the team owners the ability to trade a driver without the driver's permission and that's why the drivers all went on strike in Kyle Army in 82 and went up into that big dormitory together and Bruno Giacomelli slept with Gilles Villeneuve and Rennie Anu slept with Alan Prost and that's why that all happened and as a result of the new Concord agreement they agreed that wouldn't happen anymore because driving for a team is very different from from playing baseball for a different team or football because it's a completely different thing it's to do with apart from anything else danger and safety comes into it so there may be some drivers may not want to drive for a particular team because they don't like the safety record or whatever so you know, anyway the drivers never wanted it and I can understand why they didn't want it and it would never happen again I don't think um, Carol Peter Carroll Kraus says Audi would be better I think you mean better instead of netter uh, for Carlos yeah he'd be good there and he would he would find his feet there and uh, be a good bloke to have there. I hope he goes there. Joe Day says, oh, he's talking to Frank Ellis here. To be fair, the cars were not bad. Renault was just not there with Mercedes. Yeah. Okay, Adrian Arjan Doros says, Lewis will not be the first Hamilton at Ferrari. Duncan Hamilton raced in the Swedish Grand Prix 56 as well as at Le Mans. Yet he was kind of different character, believe me. Yes, Touch wood, Duncan Hamilton. Um, very different from Lewis Hamilton in virtually every dimension, I think. Dimension being the uh, operative word there. Um, we never really did have a scale weighing way off, did we, between um, Jose Freiland Gonzalez and Duncan Hamilton. But it would have been, and I suppose you could put in um, Campari, Giuseppe Campari in there as well. So he was the heaviest racing driver of all time. Formula One driver even. Um, so, um, Uncle Elias, Merck had a positive report as well, and their stock price got a big bump and only slightly slid during the day. I'm, I'm, I'm back into that one. 
Uh, Joe Day says, Peter, just an idea, Kevin Magnuson in Mercedes. Well, I thought you were going to say, Peter, good idea, Kevin Magnuson in Mercedes, because I did mention that earlier as a guy that should be in the running. His name should be in the ring, as it were, because he, he is seriously quick. I still believe that, Kevin Magnuson. He's a hard, tough racer as well. Um, if you want an experienced guy. I think we've got another super chat here from Andre Gant. Thank you very much. Um, a bit of hindsight for you, a bit of insight for you. <laughs> if you wonder if anyone will listen to your live stream for two hours, you have viewers, me in the USA, who listen while editing photos. Perfect substitute for background music. Thank you very much, Andre. Editing photos, that's a cool thing. I thought you were going to say reading a book, driving a car and having dinner at the same time. In other words, nobody's listening to me at all. But nice to know that you're editing photos. Probably not as relaxing as... I don't know, Mantovani playing Walk in the Black Forest or something. But anyway, there you go. Probably nobody here knows what I'm talking about. That. I think that's how it went, something like that. Ah, showing his age. Um, but thank you very much. Very funny. Um, Pete, Max is at show a lap time. Lower lap time. That's a good name. Pete. Max is a short corner driver. Lewis is a tight line driver. Big difference. Tight line. Really? Oh, sorry, I've taken you off. It's less meters and can compromise exit. Short corner Ving is short corner. I have a bid on this. No, but Max doesn't V. No, it's not. Short corner is not Ving. That's the point. Ving is Sebastian Vettel. He doesn't have Max's ability to get the front end into the corner with his release of brake pedal pressure against steering load as does Lewis, as does Max, and they all drive exactly the same way. I'm sorry, I have to disagree with you there. I don't know what you mean by um, Lewis being a tight line driver. Um, well, I do, I know what you mean. You mean he drives like Sebastian Vettel or Jean Alesi, and I totally disagree with that. He's all curves, Lewis Hamilton, as is Max. But um, I'm interested to hear you say that Lewis is a tight line driver, which seems to be very different from what um, our friend Mark Hughes has been saying, where he said he's very, very late entry to all corners so <laughs> believe me lewis is a short corner driver just like max verstappen just like jim clark just like sterling moss and charlotte clark um okay something going on about that jill belloff was fast he was indeed um Shab says, I do feel terrible for Carlos. This is the second time he's been booted because of a bigger name driver. I think he's not half bad, professional, fast, hardworking, a good CPU from the cockpit. Yeah, yeah, he is all of those things. But, you know, he's not ultimately in the class at the moment. He could be, he could be, don't get me wrong. But at the moment, he's not in the class of Charles Leclerc or Max or Lewis. That's why he keeps, a lot of people keep thinking, oh, maybe he is, and we'll, we'll sign him. And then they get disappointed because they haven't really watched the, what's going on out on the circuit. That's why a lot of these mistakes are made because a lot of the people who are making the decision about drivers are not actually watching the drivers drive. They're looking at telemetry, they're looking at them in the sim, they're thinking if they've got a nice handshake, nice girlfriend, nice way of dressing, whether they're good with the sponsors, whether they go to the gym a million times a day or not. They're looking at all these other factors that actually have no bearing whatsoever on how the driver actually performs in a racing car. And, and, that, and they never go out and to look. So, so there we go. Um, Franco Lombardi, I've just been talking about Lella Lombardi, actually. Do you think Mercedes will decline without Lewis? No, I don't think so. Assuming they keep all the other... Oh, that's a good question. I mean, they're in decline anyway with Lewis, aren't they, at the moment? So um, you, think, you mean in even more decline or they won't come out of the decline in the way they should? Uh, they're in a decline. They've lost some good people. They've got James Allison back doing some, you know, in a more, in a better position than he was for the last couple of years. Um, they've still got George. They've still got lots of money. They've still got amazing facilities. They've still got, if you like, you know, the engine thing as well, even though they've got a lot of customers um, and they've got half a chance of having a very good engine in 26. But uh, no, I don't think that. I think if they're going to have a very good car, I think they'll still have a very good car without Lewis. That can still happen. If they've got a very good car, they can still win races and win championships. That's what I think. Um, so... 
Somebody's joking here saying Nicholas Latifi from Mercedes in 2025. Now, come on, keep it serious, please. Um, right, okay. Um, two alpha drivers cancel out. Oh, I think you're talking about um, Lewis and Charlotte. You're not talking about Alpha Tori, Ricardo and Sonoda. Is Bono going with Lewis? Good point. Probably not, I would think. Because I think then it looks as if, I think from Lewis's point of view, I'd be surprised if he does. It looks like, oh, I've got to have my race engineer there as well, which is kind of disrespectful to Ferrari. And I'm not being disrespectful to Bono now at all when I say that he's not the only race engineer in the pit lane. I know they get on really well, but um, there'll be plenty of other engineers that Lewis will get on well with for sure. And one, um, they'll be at Ferrari too. Um, uh, Richard Hartley says $41 million gardening leave for Hamilton would be an interesting outcome. Surely Lewis's contract would specify that if Mercedes drop him, he gets paid and can join Ferrari early as a test driver. I doubt that. And I think it's more than 41 at the moment. So that's why I don't think it'll happen. It's a lot of money to pay somebody not to race. So science in the Red Bull in 25, um, possible, go back to Red Bull. As I say, my understanding, and I've said this at the start of the show in case those have missed it, my understanding is that Alex Albon has been offered a three-year contract by Red Bull to go there for 25. Um, so here's a list of drivers that Carolina thinks that Merck could take for one year. Drugovic, Schwarzman, Schumacher, De Vries, Kubica, Grosjean, just to name a few. And I would put a few more in there as well. Um, but yeah, thanks for that. Um, coming, not sure about all this. Um, it's a bit of a bit funny one. I won't read that out because I don't really understand it. Um, isn't anyone talking about Hass's livery? <laughs> And I see now, I mean, it's with this whole livery thing is just a joke, isn't it? Because they do new liveries virtually every race any, as, anyway, as far as I can see, you know, honour of this sponsor, honour of that race, honour of this, honour of that. And now, because it's the start of a series, you know, we're getting down to the new cars, they're all doing new livery launches as if we haven't had enough livery launches already. The Haas livery launch, Williams livery launch. Yeah, we want to see the car. Thank you very much. The new car. <clears throat> ah, here's a good one. Peter Carroll Krauss, any chance Toto would get Palou to fill the seat? Now, I really rate Alex Palou, so wouldn't that be cool? I don't think so, but it would be nice, wouldn't it? Because he's talented, very talented. I'm a bit confused, though. Is he with McLaren still, or is he a Mercedes driver? I'm not sure. I, I, he is a young driver somewhere. I think McLaren, I think. Nubia. Sacking Lewis now would be terrible for the share price. <laughs> Toto made a statement today promising fairness. Well, of course he would. And he will be fair. As I say, the car will not in any way be inferior to George's. I absolutely guarantee you that. And I don't even work for Mercedes. I'm not saying that the rest of it will be the same. And why would it? Because the guy's leaving. They're not going to involve him as much as he did. But for sure, in terms of mechanical stuff, there's no way they won't give the best possible car to Lewis Hamilton and George Russell. Um, Eric Luke, Science and Leclerc apparently had different driving styles. Do you think Leclerc and Lewis have similar driving styles? I think they do. Yeah, I think they're very similar. I'm not sure that's a good thing. I've often felt if I ever had was lucky enough to be in the position to be a team principal. I would quite like to have the sort of Leclerc sites combination. You got the best of both worlds there. You got a sort of late breaking, late turn in, early power application, reflexy guy that's quite hard on tires. And then you've got Charles Leclerc who's uh, shorter corners, turns in while he's braking, really supple and soft and wants something very different. He can do a lot more with the front end of the car than, than Carlos. So you've got all that information. Probably too much information, actually. Probably the old, um, you know, ghost in the machine stuff. But um, Aldous Huxley, wasn't it? But um, it'll be a much cleaner way of operating with Leclerc and Hamilton because they are very similar. And they both will be able to put up with the same amount of understeer, I think, is, uh, is the point I'm trying to make. Um, okay. Riegfer says Max should give Lewis a signed photo of Max in the Ferrari pyjama to congratulate Lewis. <laughs> um, 
Okay, a bit of discussion about Schwarzman and De Vries and all that. Um, Peter, do teams, this is um, 2007. Peter, do teams set up their two cars the same way for a Grand Prix or do they tailor each car for the drivers? Often the drivers have different things. I mean, in the case of Perez, he's very good on traction, not so good on managing understeer. Max is very good at managing understeer, very good at managing traction. So, you, you know, in that situation, you might find Perez would run more front wing, for example, uh, and then maybe less rear wing because he wants um once doesn't want to lose too much on the straight things like that and and yes i mean some drivers like a very soft car some like a very soft as soft as you can get it for traction others like a quite a stiff car um so you can get a sort of nice punchy turn in so uh yeah there's always differences the, the, the amount of adjustability of a grand prix car is still pretty good but it's not massive not in the way it used to be but it's still not bad Wolf 91. Rumor has it they'll put Ricardo in Red Bull again to do the double on Max. Yeah, he's a good... I say, I think Albon is definitely in the running there to go back to Red Bull. Or maybe they put... Yeah, I mean, Ricardo would be another one. Um, but then again, you know, they may not continue with Yuki Tsunoda, of course. So maybe they need both of them. So... Um, Peter, do you think Aston can produce a winning car with Honda Power in 26? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're assuming the strolls will still be around uh, if they are and pouring money into it. Um, I don't think they'll manage the engine situation with Honda as well as Red Bull did. You've got to really be on top of Honda, as I've said a million times. And we saw how we saw how McLaren kind of got it wrong in the way they managed Honda this last time. And there's a possibility it'll go that way with Aston Martin because I'm not sure they have any engine engineers at Aston Martin. Maybe they do. I don't know enough about their lineup, really. But uh, I think they, I, th I don't know. I, I don't think the, the engine will be as good as the Mercedes or probably the Ferrari, but I think it'll be okay. And the car should be all right. I mean, they've got lots of good people there, haven't they? Um, Frankie Bullen, Carlos Sainz is a very good driver. He'll definitely find a mid-level team at least. Oh, yeah, he'll definitely find a drive. But the question is, will he find a drive that will enable him to win more Grand Prix? Marwen, hi, Peter. Any thoughts on the RB20 and it's potentially annihilating the rest of the field as it's been in development since the summer break last season? Well, only that, as I say, even if they, it's been in development in the sense that a new car is in development all the time in in the heads of engineers and in computer screens and CFD and they've got the point about Red Bull is that they have all this very solid base basement to the building and it's the RB20 now and that solid basement is a solid rock of information whereas everybody else has got a slightly rocky foundation because they never got it right at, at the beginning of 2022 so everything's slightly dodgy in movement and there's a bit of earthquake coming in periodically and, and therefore the car they're doing now because they have got a new car isn't quite as solid as the RB20 is going to be so you know I think what you can say is the odds of Red Bull producing a bad car based on all the information they have are extremely small <laughs> extremely small um yeah so many questions i'm not going to get through them all um because we're running out of time can't wait for race moments this season between lewis and leclerc says relax um i'm just trying to go through them quickly um dave says hi peter thanks for making fridays more interesting thank you very much dave guy guy is it's lewis hamilton's effect in formula one just keeps on giving um uh, See, it keeps freezing. There are so many questions coming in. It keeps freezing on me now. Um, Andres Paloma says, hello. Hi there. Um, Michael Welsh says, I thought Lewis had some dollars invested in Merck. That's interesting. I wasn't aware of that. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, I'm done. You gave me a good laugh. Toto Wolf 91. <laughs> Thank you. I think this is a um, question to tell. Oh, I, I think you're just signing off. Yeah, I think it's time to go. Max is short. Oh, we've done that one. The boring. Um, Craig Stewart. This is the best news Formula One could have gotten with Lewis moving to Ferrari as a whole. Good. Tony. Peter. Um, LGH. Do you know why Honda 
came back on their decision to compete in form to compete in Formula One and how much PR will they get as a PU manufacturer at a strong brand like Aston Martin shouldn't they buy their own team well they had their own team and they got their fingers burnt a bit and then they although they did win a race um, and then they 67 Italian Grand Prix and then they've been doing engines ever since and that's you know, so their methodology is to do that that's how they think and they often go away and they come back don't they they've done that lots of times they got pulling out now we're leaving and then they come back a year later different people as I said from the start of the show it's different people running the companies these days some of them like Formula One some of them don't um, Rehan what do you make of Allison's comments? I mean, James Allison's comments that these cars hit peak performance much earlier. What does it say about much more performance Red Bull has to extract? Well, he's right in the sense that these regulations are, you know, there to be exploited. And the rule book hasn't really changed that much from and isn't changed that much between beginning of 2022 and 26. So in theory, the closer you get to the end of that era, everybody should have the same car because they've all come to the same conclusion because there aren't many more conclusions to come to because it's a finite number of things you can do. That's the theory and that, I think that's probably what he's saying. But the reality is Red Bull have got these building blocks and they're very subtle changes, these things that can really affect the performance of a car. And the more solid the building blocks under pressure, um, the better you're going to do. And look at, this, look at the format of the championship now. I mean, it's all races and one tiny test, three-day test at the start of the year. So you haven't got a lot of time to faff around, have you? It's just racing. And a lot of the racing is logistics, running the car, working from race to race, all this stuff. Speaking of logistics, um, everybody, of course, I guess is aware that in order to try to reduce the carbon footprint, they're moving the Singapore Grand Prix, no, not the Singapore Grand Prix, the a Japanese Grand Prix, to the start of the year between uh, what is it Melbourne and China and which begs the question of why the Singapore isn't there as well because they want to have everybody in the same part of the world but I guess it's because Singapore has to be in September because that's how they're set up to do all that circuit stuff and they had to change it now would be a massive thing for them um, and but then equally Melbourne has to be at the start and so does China I don't know but they're getting there aren't they Peter Bacalor, very good friend and wonderful journalist. Hi, Peter. Late joining. We'll catch up later. Very, very nice of you to join, Peter. If you've never read any of Peter's reports, have a look at Autosport from 68, 69 Tasman series reports. Absolutely spot on. Really good. Really good writer. Um, and knew his stuff too. So... Sen says, first Ferrari pit stop, Lewis will drive straight into the Mercedes garage. <laughs> um, so let's have a look. Um, Braun with a double diffuser with a Honda developed chassis. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, Honda developed chassis. It was a Japanese aerodynamicist, but I'm not sure. Was he a Honda guy? I'm not sure he was, was he? That did that? What's George's inspiration at this point? Chippo Mumby. Uh, his inspiration at this point is, wow, <laughs> look at the position I'm in. Lewis is leaving. I'm racing for a great Grand Prix team with a massive history, uh, amazing facilities, great people. I'm going to motivate them. I'm going to really get out there, drive better than I've ever driven before. And, and I'm going to have world championships in front of me now. Mega. That's what he's thinking. Whether he's right it's another matter, of course, but that's what he's thinking, I'm sure. Um, what's this after what happened when Sebastian went to Ferrari do you believe that they have a chance of winning the title with Lewis seems highly unlikely to me absolutely I don't think there's any comparison whatsoever I mean Sebastian went to Ferrari having been blown away by Daniel Ricciardo at Red Bull and rather than sit down and work out why he got blown off blown away he said, oh, stuff this, I'm going to go to Ferrari and went there as the four times world champion. And they said, yes, Sebastian, you want this, you want that, we'll do everything. And nobody said, hang on a sec, why did you get beaten by Ricardo? Was it maybe Ricardo was a bit quicker in that car? Why, what was he doing differently? And nobody said that and nobody thought about it. And Sebastian never, never thought about it. And so he never got any better. And that was that. And so they were all a bit disappointed in the end, I think. And whereas Lewis is going there is Lewis Hamilton, mega driver. So I don't think it's any comparison whatsoever. 
I mean, yes, George Russell has been near him on occasions, but and and Nico won a championship, but it wasn't he wasn't blown away uh, on a yearly annual performance by Daniel Ricciardo or a driver of Ricciardo's ill, was he? No comparison, I think, actually. Chippo Mumby, will Lewis open the cash floodgates like the Saudi football investment saga? I don't know much about football, but I'm presuming it's similar to the live golf investment thing. Um, you mean, will the Saudis now start buying Formula One? Is that, is that what you're getting at? If it is, I wouldn't put it past liberty to sell to the Saudis at some point. It seems to be the only, they seem to be the only geographical group, economic group that could afford to do that. Um, so it could happen, I suppose. I don't think it'd be the Lewis thing that makes it happen. It'd just be the Saudis want to own Formula One as well as everything else. Wouldn't it be just that? Um, Joe Dye, Tony Ford, well, he's replying, sure, but the past is re relative. Toyota Formula One had a great engine team. They just refused to do the extra step to win. They have the finance and the talent to do well. Yeah, um, I think Toyota, if they'd stayed on, I think they could have started winning races, could have started to win races, actually. They, they had a very good tunnel, had good people. They just needed slightly better drivers, I think, or different drivers. Um, I think everything else is there. I think got a lot of time for John Howard, who was the team principal at the time. And he was poorly treated, I think, by Formula One, as were Toyota. What would Formula One be like without Adrian, since he's the most important person in the paddock for the team? Oh, it'd be unbelievably competitive. <laughs> it'd be a different race winner every race weekend, probably. Yeah, that's how much difference Lu uh, Adrian makes. That's why I say, you know, if Ferrari had spent a billion but getting him five years ago, they would have won three championships. Different. We have a different world. Um, Ford. Is this, I think you're talking about Ford. They have great real depth and knowledge of hybrid powertrains. There you go. So Ford, I think they'll do quite well. Um, I'm going to have to pag it in now, as John Surtees once said. Um, William Belcher, do you think any of this has anything to do with Lewis feeling like he wasn't listened to about his wishes for the car? Yeah, possibly. I think a lot of it is that. It's things that weren't, just didn't feel the same. You know, the car wasn't competitive. And when the car's not competitive, really competitive, all sorts of things happen. You know, the driver has expresses his opinion. The engineers say this. The performance engineers say that. The aerodynamics say this. The engine people say that. It always happens that way. And yeah, there will have been moments. But I don't think that was the main reason. I think it was that plus Abu Dhabi plus George instead of Valtteri plus he's been racing a long time. You know, and he needs a he needs a change. He needs fresh air, and and it's what he's getting. And I think he's done the right thing. Um. So there we go. So, um, Caitlin Mercier, and this is going to make this the last question. Oh, super chat, super chat. It says, my mum and I are watching from the beginning. She's a huge fan. It would make her night if you said hi. Her name is Lumi. Ah, well, hi, Lumi. Thank you so much for watching. Very kind of you. Very, very kind. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I have so much going on. I'll try and do another one soon. And because um, it's, you know, it's only a month away. The season starts, isn't it? Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I can't got so much going on with the because the the exhibition opened in Vienna is opening in Vienna and then we got more coming up flat out on that plus other things and Jack's got a tournament two weeks time thinking about that preparing practicing hard <laughs> very important that um, so there we go I think uh, it's a lovely note to finish on actually Okay, Joe Day says, no, poor Truly, everybody. On. I really rated Jano Truly, and I, I'd like to him to have stayed on at Toyota, actually, and then it could have been, you know, had another driver. I think Jano was very, very good. He was an absolutely brilliant short corner driver. Had a couple of other, he wasn't very good on understeer, but he was very good when he had grip. Very good. Um, so thank you. I'm going to finish on that one, though, with um, that very sweet message. Thank you so much. Um... <laughs> so much coming on I know I've got to stop now this is, this is crazy thank you so much everyone thanks for watching and um, I'll try and do another one fairly soon because I know everybody's keen to talk when we've got a little bit more info but uh, in the meantime thanks for all your questions thanks to Jetcraft thanks to Pitbox for your support of this channel don't forget that we have our new podcast channel called Short Corners uh, on Spotify 
on Amazon Music and Google Podcasts, not on Apple at the moment. There seems to be some drama there. I don't know what it is. I'm talking to the Apple guys on a daily basis. Something's not right uh, with the technology. Nothing to do with the podcast. Uh, but it will hopefully be on Apple fairly soon. But it's on those other ones, which is great. And um, lots more happening, out, of course. I'll be doing the normal race videos as well. But in the meantime, thanks for watching this live stream. We'll do another one soon. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for your questions. And have a great weekend. Stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.